trepidatious way because this is all a grand experiment, I must say. Uh, let me see what I've got here. Um, do we have sound is always the first thing that I need to ask because that's just generally the way it works around here. I'm going to watch that now so I can see what's going on. Uh, as always, there's the chaos of trying to figure out how to make this work every time for me. Baz is helping today, though, which is wonderful. And we are doing a live Tech Bandits, which I am very, very excited about. I'm very excited to share the schooling that I get from my middle schoolers. Baz, you there? Hey, is that you, Toby? Hey, how are you, buddy? I think... We'll see if everyone can hear everything that's going on. Baz suggested that we go with te with voice because he said that no kid wants to have to text all their questions. Is that would you say that's a valid response? Yeah, I mean you, but do you text? Do you mainly text your friends, or do, are you or you uh, or you uh, voice? Like when you talk to your friends, do you mainly just pick up the phone and call them, or do you text them, or how do you normally communicate? Oh, really? That's kind of old. What are you, an old man? Isn't that kind of old school? <laughs> so we are, um, we're live. I don't know if, um, who can hear what. So Baz is going to help me out with this because he's my tech genius. Um, Jack and Kaz is here. Miss Lynx is here. It's full-time job is here. Who likes to refer to me as legend. And I quite like that. What do you think, Toby? Am I like a legendary uncle? <laughs> yeah legend it's legend um all right so let's do a quick test here if you wouldn't mind because this is my first tech bandits live um who can hear who you can hear me i'm assuming let's just get a check on that in the chat anyone can anyone get back to me on? yep okay so care bear says we can hear um can you hear when toby speaks take it away toby So do we hear Toby talking as well? No. You can hear me, but not but not Toby. Oh, okay. Audio is low, too quiet. So if I can I up the audio? Hmm, how do I do that? Woo! Wow, that did we hear that? Because I heard that. <laughs> is that your is that your your wonky phone? Um Yes. No, Baz is muted for some reason. And he's saying that nobody can hear you. Ah, I see. Nobody can hear me. Yeah. Baz huh? is saying nobody can hear anyone. And he, he was asking if you could hear him. Ah, so well. So I'll go tell him that he's muted. Okay, they can hear me, but they can't hear Toby. Baz is muted. Okay. Um, well, so may, uh, Toby, make your voice volume higher. Oh my God, I have to turn the volume down for me. So you can hear him, but very quietly. Okay, well, maybe I, maybe that's something I can change. Yeah, it may be, this may be a thing that, uh, this may be my, this may be my way of, my way of fixing stuff. Oh, there you go, use your volume. Look at that, I can put your volume up. Now you're uh, we're not going to be gaming today. Today we are doing Tech Bandits, which is the which is all, which is all about the um, uh, well, it's sort of the tech side of stuff. Now that's not to say you can't. You're welcome to like dual screen. That's what I usually tell people. Um, you can hear someone in the background. Says Jack and Kaz. Hey, Bess says turn up the volume in OBS so you can hear desktop audio. Turn up the audio in OBS. OBS. So that you can hear ah, desktop audio. How's that? Are people hearing that now? Can you hear Baz? I can't hear Baz yet. Baz is still muted, it says. Muted by me, it says. Oh, oh, oh that might be... Never mind. Hi, Baz. <laughs> I mute... Baz... Baz, I had muted Baz the entire time. My helpful Baz has been muted the entire time. I'm so sorry, buddy. It is kind of like working with your grandfather, isn't it? It's like a bit like, oh, I say, I'm just churning some butter here while I use the interwebs. Um, all right, let's see how we're hearing. Can we? Do you hear Toby and everybody now? 
I did tell everyone, I did warn everybody this was going to be a grand experiment. Um, all right. So, do we hear Baz now? Baz, try talking. So, no Baz. So, for some reason, this is what happens when you leave your dad alone, Baz. It's so true, Bertley. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Baz is, Baz is coming down to fix it. I am in trouble. Big trouble. Yeah, he's in his bedroom now. So, Baz has moved to his bedroom. Um, uh, so, so you guys get to hear, uh, so basically the, 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 um, the Twitch stream can only hear me talking. So I'll try to explain what's happening. It's like this. Ah, I have nothing's working. Ah, well you won't, I think you have to log into twitch.tv for that. Hey guys. Hey, it's the Baz. Okay. So, so where's OBS? See right here. Here's OBS, right? I'm getting young Rodney you McKay no to help. desktop audio. I'm like Zelenka in this in this so situation. Properties. I'm going to eat my breakfast. You have to change this, Dad, just so you know what to do. Yeah, what do we got? To, what? Yeah, you have to change it to this one. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, people should be able to hear. All Everyone right. on Discord, can you all talk for me? Wait, Hello. Baz, I can't hear can you. Anyone, can everyone hear them while they talk? Sounds. I can hear. Oh my gosh, we have it. Baz, I worship at the altar of Baz. Um, well done, buddy. Um, I totally could have figured that out. I just wanted breakfast. That's really what it was all about. <laughs> yeah. Um, how is everybody? Good. Good. Um, who we got here? Who we got here today? We've got... Hey, Lord Chunky! All right! I thought I recognized your voice. Um, who we got here? Who we got here today? Oh, who's got yeah. an echo? We've got... Ooh. Hey, Lord Chunky! All oh, right. whoever's got the stream on should mute their stream. So don't mute your Discord. Like your one. Or, like, put the volume down on your Twitch thing so we don't get too much of an echo. That is great. Greetings from Argentina. Oh, my yeah. God, we got people from all over the place here today. That was me. Um, the Mad Murph. I like that. Baz McKay. He basically is Baz McKay at this point. Um, and I don't know if you guys... Hey, wait a sec. Jack, have you yet witnessed the squirrel cam? No, I haven't actually. So, so you go squirrel watching? There is a... We have... I've set up a Stargate in the window. And the, and the webcam looks through the Stargate at this little patch of our garden underneath the bird feeder. And, um... In the middle of a stream, a squirrel will come by. Everything will stop as everyone starts typing in squirrel. And that's basically how we run these things so around cool. here. It's kind of <laughs> neat. I wanna, I, I'd want to. i really like to get a gecko cam as well. I think we should install a gecko cam. But then you could just watch it sleeping because that's all. It doesn't even It doesn't even move. Um, well, maybe yeah. the chat would tell you when it moves. <laughs> that's, true. that's true. We have movement. We have movement. Um does Baz know you were on his computer? I'm not, K. Michael. That's the thing. So, so this is the. So, K. Michael, actually, I'm. Do you know that Baz is on his computer? <laughs> <laughs> Go. What are you gonna say, Baz? What are you gonna um, explain the situation? I moved my PC up to my room because I'm gonna have this Overwatch camp um, on Monday. Explain the Overwatch camp to, to <laughs> both me and everyone else. Gesund height. Oh my God! I could. Um, I heard that. that basically coaches me on how to get better at certain heroes so that I can be better at Overwatch. Doesn't ever doesn't everyone wish they were a kid right now? Like I can't believe that <laughs> as an option for camp you have like video game <laughs> camp. Yeah. Um we have one gecko, Val, by the way. So just so to the tech bandits know, we've got people here from Australia, from Brasilia, Brazil, um Oregon, Oregon. I used to be like near our stomping grounds. We used to go through Oregon all the time. Um, yeah, we got people from all Argentina. We got people from all over the place. And and the basic idea here is I thought we would, I wanted to introduce everybody to the Tech Bandits. Um, not necessarily the specific people. I don't want to put you guys on the spot. But just the idea of Tech Bandits. And basically what we do is we hang out and we just chat about cool stuff, which is basically kind of what we do on the Twitch stream anyways. So I thought this might be a good way of like opening it up to everybody and maybe even getting some new tech bandits in the mix from sort of around the world, you know, like diversify 
geography or whatever the term would be for it. Um, you know, and like because we got people from Texas here, we got people from the Netherlands, North Carolina, Nashville, Rosh, uh, Rosh, Rosh, Rochester, New York, Rochester, New York, where I used to see the public television stuff. We got Germany, we got Southern California. Uh, so jealous, Sally. Um, hot stuff, Chris. Hot stuff, Chris. Boy, he's not shy. Um, is from Ireland. Uh, watching a uh, at Virginia. Wow, UK. We got people from all over the place. So I figured, like, we've got some really Switzerland. We got some great. We got a whole bunch of different perspectives on stuff. So it'd be kind of cool to see how we can take the tech bandits and sort of. What the heck is that noise? Um, Toby, <laughs> while we do our little talk, I'm just gonna mute everyone super quick. Oh, okay, all right. Okay. That's not a bad idea. Um, Toby. So Toby is working on a. Toby, what did you drop? You dropped your phone or something, didn't you? Uh, basically, I broke my phone. How did now? How did you break it? Basically, when I play basketball, sometimes <laughs> I don't have zip up pockets. So when I jump up to like do a layup, it, right. it falls out my pocket, and then it yeah. I'm having a bite on my breakfast. Okay, there you go, Dad. I've muted all participants, so now. One of the things that I thought was so. Rain. <laughs> one of the things I thought was very important. Was that I always eat on stream? It's very in character of me. <laughs> so it's kind of a, a little bit of an ASMR thing as well, right, Beth? Yeah, I actually have cereal as well. So. Oh, do you? <laughs> yep. That's great. So Mad Murph is new here. What are the tech bandits? Okay, a great question. Um, I'm also going to do a huge shout out thanks to Cal. Cal's been amazing. Not only is, does Cal wield the hammer of the band um, and help with moderation and stuff, she's been um, she's been dropping by our um, our PC bandits because she's like a you know she's a gamer gal, she knows her stuff, um, and so she's been a part of that as well. So it's just been amazing to have her around and you know as always, um, and we'll never hear a word out of her except the odd meow once in a while. Um, so the tech bandits are this cl is this is this club that I started at the local school. And um, the idea was to uh, get kids out of the idea that, um, kids, to get my fellow nerds out of the idea that, you know, that things are black boxes, that things are, you know, oh, it's broken, throw it away, let's get a new one. The idea of trying to get them interested in pulling stuff apart. And Toby, for example, Toby's always loved pulling stuff apart. Um, yeah. And I think there's a certain mentality that comes... Like, what is it that you like about pulling stuff apart, Toby? Like, what, is, like, what do you think it is that makes it... Like, because I love it, too. Um, sometimes it's cool to, like, see what's inside stuff. Mm. Can you figure out how to put them back together again? I never can. Uh, yeah, yeah, same. I, like, just take them apart, Dad, uh, but then it's just so hard. Here? I'm able to hear Toby, yes. Yeah. Oh, Baz oh. thought... Baz thought he'd muted you. Ah, uh -huh. No... You're, you're no cow, Baz. You're no cow. Um, yeah, I, and I, I used to think of that as failure. I used to think, oh, I've taken it apart, I've broken it, and now it doesn't work anymore. And yes, it was in a way, but the amount of stuff you learn pulling stuff apart is extraordinary. Like, you get to see all the different parts and stuff, and you begin to work out what they are. And do you look up stuff? Like, do you find yourself looking up, like, what things are and stuff, Tobes? Oh, uh, yeah, sometimes, like, when I, I really want to put it back together. Right. When it's really important to get it back together before your yeah. parents get home, um, yeah. it's it, the Google, the Googles can be very useful. Yeah. Um, you know, we use like iFixit and that kind of stuff, those sites to see how things are taken apart and put back together and all that kind of jazz. So mm -hmm. we basically, I thought the best way to get kids interested in that stuff was to start taking stuff apart. And then it sort of expanded from there because I have, as one can probably tell, a few toys of my own and I started bringing them in. And letting the kids work with them, and I have a, I had a, I have a, a real sort of passion for assistive technology. I love technology that helps either enhance humans or improve humans' lives. Um, mm -hmm. So that became a really cool sort of tool for inspiration. And I want to be very clear here: I'm not teaching kids anything, right, Toby? Yeah. <laughs> and Jack knows I'm not teaching anything. Jack's doing all the teaching. Um, the idea is that is that I'm sort of learning with them, and the idea is just to try to find stuff that's exciting. Um, actually, Jack's a good person to talk to, because, Jack, you've been here since the beginning, right? Yes, I have. Um, yeah, yeah, he's been here since we started doing this in grade four, actually. Yeah. And Jack, 
is our is our reigning PC guru now. Like he yeah, is, he is he's like the oracle in the Matrix. You go to him to ask him anything about PC gaming. So maybe I'd actually be curious to know what your perspective on it is, Jack. So how did you? Why did you? Why were you interested in it? I mean, other than obviously you got to hang out with me. <laughs> um, I don't remember why I started. I think it's just like I tried it the first time. It was like seeing how certain things worked because like before that, like I would have never really known like what's inside a laptop, what's inside of these things, what does this look like? I don't. It's just yeah, they seem sort of precious. Do you really understand how it works on a different level? What did you? Uh, and you definitely preferred. You sort of took more to the desktop than the the laptops weren't as much fun, strangely, to take apart, were they? They were fun, still. I mean, anything's fun to take apart, to be honest. But the PCs, you sort of like, that sort of caught your attention, though. Yes. And and for you, it's not just the gaming, right? You seem to like all the parts as well. Yeah. Um, And... I do some of the gaming, but... Well, yeah, no. I get... It's not. I'm not saying you don't game. I definitely get the sense you do a lot of gaming. Um, but it's. I think it's interesting that that and it was something that I that sort of sparked my, it sort of inspired me was because I go like, well, wait a second. Maybe gaming is a way is another way into, to sort of finding other things to get excited about, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, you built your. You priced out. You sourced, and you saved for your first gaming PC, right? Yes. And you built that whole thing yourself. Yeah. Um, uh, did did uh, did dad help? Dad and mom help at all? Um. Well, one time, mm. I wanted to unplug the twenty-four pin connector. If anyone knows how to build PCs, they'll know what that is. Mm. It's like the huge one that plugs into the motherboard. Right. And I, it was stuck. And I needed help, and that was it. Oh, but that's it. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, how did you learn how to do all that stuff? Um, a lot of YouTube. Yeah, YouTube's pretty amazing at that, isn't it? And this yeah. is the and this is the other thing that I guess is sort of why I got sort of inspired to keep doing this was because I feel like I'm I, I'm not a teacher. I can't I, I don't know enough about stuff to teach anyone anything. But the reality is there's a whole internet out there for learning stuff if you want to. But yeah. you have to want to learn, right? If there's no impetus to go and look up stuff that's of any kind of interest to you then you're not going to do it but if you do then basically you can train yourself as a doctor at this point i mean like there's so much stuff out there i'm not suggesting anyone should do that toby do not start operating on people um you know but i i just feel like there's so much stuff out there and there's so many like if you want the best teacher in the world you don't go to your local school you go to the internet because there's people who've mastered whatever that specific you know, lesson is. I'm not saying you shouldn't have your local math teacher because obviously you need someone there to help, you know, and you know, support and stuff. But why should every math teacher be struggling to come up with the best way of teaching something when there's something already out there that is like, like right on, right on track, basically. Do you guys use a lot of YouTube with school? I mean, is that a part of school for you guys? No. A little bit. Not, uh, yeah, not. a little bit. So, like, how would you say, like, and what are there any specific classes that you're using YouTube more than others? Um, I would say a lot of French in my school is taught by YouTube. Really? Yeah. What do you watch in French? I don't know. Our French teacher was pretty bad, so like, I he, I, I never really learned any French all throughout the year. French is a tough one. French is a really tough one. Um, because I. I'll tell you, I hated French, hated, hated French until I got out of school and I suddenly realized when I went to Paris, went to Paris for like a film festival thing, I could actually understand the odd thing. And that is invaluable. You know what I mean? Um, Yeah. So, but yeah, teachers make a big, a big difference. And I think different speakers, different teachers speak to different students in different ways. There are some kids who are going to respond really well to learning French and there are others like me and Jack who just, you know, who just have no interest. Um, but I think, again, I, I sort of treat computer programming a bit like languages in that I feel like if you don't speak them every day, they're pretty useless to you because you've forgotten everything by the next time you sit down to try to do it. Like yeah. right, right now I'm working with these things called regular expressions, which are so cool. It's basically a way of doing like 
really complex searches. Like, you know when you're like, you search a document for something or you search a website mm -hmm. for something? Um, this is a way of, you use all these sort of little tiny codes and stuff to create a search so you can find exactly what you want. But it's incredibly complex. Um, but, and again, I've done this a million times, but I do it every like year or so. And so of course, by the time I come back to it, I've forgotten everything, right? So unless you're using these things all the time, I find you just, you know, you forget. Um, yeah. So I should, I should probably just jump back for a second and talk about the format of this. So the idea is, the whole point of Tech Bandage is sort of a place for, um, for, you know, people like me who happen to be in school right now who want to talk about tech and ideally we were doing, you know, hands on tech stuff, but of course, because of COVID and because of teacher strikes and all this kind of stuff, um, it's sort of been online or at my house. Um, so, but now we're in lockdown still, we're, we're, we're doing this virtually. So I'm going to definitely be focusing more on talking with my tech bandits, but I will obviously try to hop in and, um, and, uh, and uh, deal with the uh, deal with and talk with the um, the Twitch chat as well. So what's up with Jack Jasra? All right, need to head out for grocery shopping. Good luck, Jack. Get lots and lots of chocolate. That's my suggestion. And uh, be Idea. safe. German Idea. Trekkie. I'm good, thank you, German Trekkie. Yeah, Regex is awesome, but so hard to keep in your head. I that and that's it. So they call it Regex. That's like the cool term for it. Um, now I should check my email and make sure that. What was that? Cool term for what? Sorry, oh, sorry. Re regex, regex is the um, regex is the term for uh, that search thing I was talking about. They're called regular expressions, and then the the cool way of saying it's regex. Um, all right, and let me see. I'm just gonna check my email and make sure that that kids are not struggling to try to figure out Discord right now. And if they are, I shall sick Baz on them. There you go, Hannah. So cool. Um, oh wow! So one of our mums knows. So I sent out a little a little email to everybody to say hi, and um, and one of the mums knows someone who does work with Festo, which is this robotics company. Have you seen these things? I don't. Most of the bandits don't look at the emails, but let me let me pull up the email that I sent because I looked at it today. Did you look at it today? bit like half of it maybe you look at like <laughs> half of it maybe who we got on here who's noodle the raccoon uh this is alma hi hey alma how you doing yay i was i was worried that people weren't going to be able to figure out this discord thing is this the first time you've used discord alma uh yeah it was a bit i was a bit confused you were a bit I was, confused i i was sort of like how, how do you get on the call it's and so was, weird like the gear thing and i did and i think i left and rejoined a few times and finally after a very long amount of confused clicking it worked so she was are. a confused noodle the raccoon uh <laughs> i gotta say i find discord very weird to get used to like it's a whole new thing for me baz is sort of well baz uses it all the time who else uses it all the time toby are you using discord all the time a little bit to text my friends and what about what about you jack are you using it um yes all the time Really? Yeah, and Baz is like constantly on Discord. So, yeah. in fact, Jack, Jack, you were suggesting that we do Tech Bandits in general on Discord. Yeah. Um, so there you go, Noodle. We may have to, uh, you know, we may be, you know, to bring us into the cool world, we may be using Discord. Um, it's high tech. Today. It's very high tech. Isn't it high tech? It is very high tech. So this is, it's so, confusing. so Alma, just so you know, so we're streaming this as well so that oh, I, can, I can see it. I'm watching the stream right now. Oh, well, aren't you hip and cool? <laughs> All right, I want to make sure that everyone was getting in okay. Um, like, I, like, I, like I said, I can, I can, I read half the email, maybe you... a quarter of the email. <laughs> email, okay? Maybe my mom read most of it and then told me. Oh, is your mom reading them as well? So your mom's doing your homework for you. That's shameful. <laughs> me. Uh... Uh, well, your mom is really into this stuff too, isn't she? I mean, she likes this stuff. Yeah, she she's sort of she never wants to be on camera, but she's always sort of in the background, like. It's true. You can always hear her in the background, and she'll say like, "Oh, what about this?" Or like, it's like it's really, it's kind of fun. She's like, a, uh, she asks me questions to ask. She's like your ghostly steam companion. That's sort of funny. Um, 
All right, so let me see this. So the email I sent out, just so people can, so that our our Twitch folks can figure out what's going on. Um, I think I actually have it on a tab right now. You have to have it on a tab. Yeah, you can put it in a tab. I do. That works well. I do. I already do. Oh, look at you. I've For some reason, I've just been logged out of Twitch. Oh, I know Tom why. He seems pretty happy that there's no more Zoom. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've been, for some reason, I've been logged out of Twitch. I don't understand. Oh, I bet you I know why. Is it because, Baz, you're on too, right? Oh, no, but I should be able to watch it still, shouldn't I? Um, all right, tech support. Tech support, everybody. I think I'm good. I think I'm running. It's just going very, very slowly for me. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, um, so the email that I sent out so that everyone in, in, the, in the chat can know what we're talking about had a bunch of things here. So the first thing was this conspiracy theory thing. And I know Alma's got something to say about that. I'm sure she does. <laughs> but let me, give it, let me give people a basic idea of what I was saying. Go ahead. So the first thing is, I put this link in about, about conspiracy theories. And you know, the best place to talk about conspiracy theories is on an internet live chat, because you know everyone's... But basically, people are setting fire like literally trying to burn down these 5G towers because Why? somebody out there has said that it either causes COVID or that it, 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 it somehow attacks your immune system so that COVID can kill you, basically. Oh, wow. Okay, okay, okay. That's like saying AirPods will give you cancer. Well, but this is the funny thing is... I, but but Baz, they do give you cancer. They do? What if they do? But like, what if they do? Didn't you hear? So Fumbles McStupid says that they burned a 5G tower near near their mom. Really? So what was it? This is the other thing I don't quite understand is like, aren't they metal? <laughs> like I thought they were metal towers. Yeah. Who uses wooden towers anymore? Oh, and also yeah, Bill. But a little gasoline tower. fixes that. So, so let me ask you a question here. I'm going to put this out to the Twitch chat. A little gasoline fixes that. A little gasoline. Oh, so you think they're just soaking it in gasoline and then just frying all the cables? Oh, that, that, that's... Yeah, maybe that... There's no like way they're lighting those things on fire. There's something flammable. Yeah, those oh, are no... I really cool. catch fire. Unless you do it on, yeah. like, the exact wire. I like in the chat that yeah. they burned one in their city, the G-Tower. I love the fact that we went from a discussion about conspiracy theories and 5G to how to burn down a metal pole. <laughs> Welcome to Tech Landis. Welcome to That's it. That's it. <laughs> we start talking about some cool sensor and then we end up talking about how um, a raccoon, I saw a raccoon last night or whatever. Yeah, but that's yeah. sort of, and that's, when someone was asking what Tech Bandits is, that's kind of what it is, right? It's a bit yeah. like the squirrel cam. <laughs> about like everything like everything baz let's talk about homework yes homework baz how are you keeping up on your homework <laughs> uh, we don't talk about everything here well we try to avoid what was that homework homework we try not to talk about school too much because the idea here is basically i don't want to i i sort of i really don't and Alma's pretty good at telling me to stop when I start sounding like, or Baz too, when I start sounding like I'm trying to teach someone something. I just, it's, you know, because, you know, it's the idea is to just sort of throw stuff out there. But I just thought it was kind of interesting that, that first off, it's been, I think we can safely say that it has been absolutely refuted that 3G does not cause COVID. I don't, um, Dad, no, I, don't I know you don't always the term Karen, but I really, I like something Dead Pixel said, saying jet fuel can't melt metal steel beams, but Karen's with some gasoline. <laughs> oh boy, so Dead Pixel, wait a second, but are you making a, are you saying, interesting, are you, is that making a re reference, is that like a 9-11 reference though? Like, is that about not no, melting? A Karen, no. a Karen is no, like. I, I think that was a joke saying that stuff like that can't burn dumb stuff. Right, right. So why would gasoline? Yeah, so... I can't believe... as Dead Pixel I makes a really good point. That joke a little, a little different than all of us. De I like that Dead Pixel says, like, I can't, I can't believe that we actually have to... Like, that it's actually necessary to tell people that 5G doesn't cause COVID. A virus. Yeah. Um, it's sort of like... Sometimes you sort of... Um, think, how smart is, is the human race, really? 
<laughs> oh, believe me. I find myself asking that all the time. This is the one a long running joke about how oh, the metal okay. beams wasn't supposed to be able to burn down. Um, like these, like how bees aren't supposed to be able to fly. Yeah. What? Aren't able to fly? Not supposed to because they have big bodies and little wings. Oh, yeah. And like, <laughs> yeah, bumblebees can, technically so can't fly, apparently. You got that from the bee movie, didn't you? <laughs> I don't think so. I thought I'd heard that before. But. I, I heard it before from the B movie. <laughs> so, Cal says yeah. something interesting. Cal's raised an interesting point, though. She says that, you know, people still... But do you really want to sleep with your phone next to your bed? Like, is... Like, what was... You, I, I'll tell you an interesting thing that I didn't know. That phones are tested. Phones are tested being held a foot away from your face. That's how they're tested to see how damaging they are. So the reality, is, oh my, oh my gosh, did you see this? A little elf, not little, sorry baby, I mean a, a wonderful woman just brought a cup of coffee and some kind of horribly healthy looking shake to me. <laughs> yeah. Really? I like the way that, I, you, you don't already have a, I'm surprised you don't already have a mug of coffee, David. Well. Usually at all of your meetings, you're like, guys, give me another one. <laughs> You're really, you're really making me look good there, Alma. Really good. I try. I try. <laughs> it's true. It is true, though. Um, Alma, have you seen the squirrel cam before? Uh, no, I don't think so. So no. that's a squirrel cam. Nothing's happened yet, but every so often, you'll a squirrel will fall out of a tree around there. I just want to say, I've been, I've been here from the beginning. I've been here at the stream from the time it started. Oh, so you've seen it? Oh, okay. All right. So you're, I, I can stop. Get it all. I, Get it all. Very good. I could stop telling you what's happened. And then what happened? Okay, so, um, all right, so I think we've covered that. But, oh, but that was the interesting thing that came up in this article about the 5G thing. Because I've seen the 5G thing before, and I just thought it was cool to put a picture of something on fire in the email, because I thought that might get people's attention. Um, but I think the more, the more interesting thing was, they're saying that because of the way the world is right now, it's like the perfect breeding ground for conspiracies. <laughs> So how do you protect yourself against that stuff? Like, Toby, you're, uh, I know in, in London, England, because Toby Toby lives in London, um, although he's in Toronto right now, or in Canada right now. Um, uh, Toby, they, they were doing a lot of this burning of 5G stuff down and things in London, I know. But, like, how do you, how, does pe how do people get news there that would make them think that that's what they should do? And how do we protect ourselves against finding out, like, thinking stuff is real that isn't? Wait, I'm confused. I'm very confusing. Um, That's my job here. Um, wait, what did you say? Well, apparently in London, the, apparently London, England has had a, a big problem with, or England in general, has had a big problem with this 5G tower thing because for some reason mm -hmm. that, that, that misconception that, that, that COVID is caused by these things has sort of caught on there. And I'm just wondering, uh where would they hear that? Like, are there places in England, are there things in England or, or shows in England or whatever that you're hearing about where they're talking about this stuff? Honestly, I didn't know that it was a thing. Oh, really? Or you said. You know why? I mean. Because you're a tech bandit. Yeah. You know I better. Might, it, may, it might be something to do with, like, the countryside or something. I don't know. Ha. Huh. But I haven't really seen anything in London. That's interesting, though. So you're saying that if they, so you're living in the country, someone mm -hmm. suddenly puts up a big tower with a bunch of things on it, that people get paranoid. I can understand that. Yeah, because I think people like like the country and not like big towers. Mm. So it's probably just a reason to get it down. Huh, that's interesting. I know... That, that, maybe. What was that? Maybe, maybe. I mean, that's sort of... I, mean, I could sort of see that making sense, though, right? Because, I mean, I know that mm -hmm. in uh, what Jane's dad's place in Warwickshire, they had to put there was the right of way for power lines, so they had to put these massive power line things on a portion of Jane's, what what is now Jane's land, um, and there's no recourse. Like you can't, there's nothing you can do. Like that's just that's like built into like whatever the rules are for living out there. Um, but the reality is, it's been proven that living under electrical, like high voltage wire, is not necessarily good for you, right? I but well now again I'm saying that but is that true I don't know I'm not looking it up maybe that's the maybe I'm the problem maybe it's because we maybe. say stuff and people just automatically believe it 
Maybe. Do, that's true. Do you think we could start a rumor and see if it actually works on the internet? Uh, like, it has to be something really dumb, thing. though. It has to be something yeah, dumb and that no one's going to get hurt with. Yeah, that's... But it would have to... The thing is, the person would have to be just joining the stream and not hear the entire conversation we just said. Good point. You're they right. They believe it's real. Stargate but, is real. But, do you, well, don't... Do you watch that one. <laughs> be yeah, careful with that because there's definitely people out there who think it is. Definitely. Maybe there's one uh, COVID... Uh, um, there's a, there's a really there's a bunch of good ones. Uh, dead pic protects you from five G and gets you dates. That dead pixel, I think that's the one. That's a good one. We're talking about the fruit or no? I'm <laughs> <laughs> it gets you Actually, dates. That would, My. That'd be the opposite of a harmful one because technically that would make people wear masks because some people aren't doing that. Oh, I. I think my mom told me. Uh, I think I don't know when the date is, but soon it's gonna you're, it's gonna be mandatory to wear a mask inside public. Yeah. Like buildings. Yeah, they're making it mandatory here, and they've they had a terrible time here with. Um, did you see those pictures of Wasega Beach? So Wasega oh, Beach was yeah. just uh, like it was literally a crowded beach in the middle of of what oh, was yeah, supposed I to be. Oh yeah, I actually went to Wasega Beach. Oh, uh, way to go! You're one of them. <laughs> like, I, 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 so, we were about to go to it. Yeah. There was humongous traffic. Yeah. To get into it. So, yeah. Indicating it. But this is the problem is I think everyone thinks... So, okay. So, let me let me throw this out here as a suggestion. Is it possible that the reason... Like, if you're in the countryside and someone builds a tower without you knowing anything about it, you're going to be suspicious. Whereas if you get informed about it, if there are people who could tell you about this stuff in a reasonable way, maybe before it goes up, like five... Wait, go on. saying it's misinformation. Well, is it misinformation? I think it's, but it's misinformation because people aren't getting the information in the first place. So maybe, you know, like I subscribe to this site called Snopes, which is really, uh, is pretty good as, as a sort of a, a way of telling whether something's true or not. Because I find that even while, you know, I'm definitely more on the, I, I guess, um, you know, I'm more on the, uh, uh, I am more on the suspicious side with most things. It's like Baz will come in and say, "Oh my God, did you know this?" And I'll go, "I need three sources, and I need to know. I need to be. I need three good sources of that information before I'll believe some TikToker who's saying about it." Right, Baz? Because <laughs> um, Baz gets a lot of. Baz gets most of his news from like TikTok, right, or YouTube. That is the worst place to get news ever. Oh, yeah, actually, come on, come about on that. Baz. So you know how they have like life hacks on TikTok, right? Yeah. Yeah, those are good. I actually, I actually tried one, which is I don't know if you've seen it. You take a knife to open a bottle. Yeah. Oh. I actually tried it and it worked. You know what? what, what? So you can <laughs> learn stuff off TikTok. Ah. Uh -huh. Um. So okay. Yeah, I... Sorry, I should let Baz defend himself. Yeah, go ahead. Baz. We just love Baz is just going off the game. <laughs> um, but but you do get a lot of your information from YouTube and 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 uh... Uh, yeah, but mainly YouTube, um, but also TikTok. TikTok is what taught me about the whole protest, um, the BLM protest, and mm. why it started and everything. Mm. Okay, so you're saying it can be a valid so, source of information I too. It, I think it can be valid, but you do have to find your other points of information. Yeah, I think okay. you just have to be careful. Yeah. It's, it, with any any online site or like YouTube and, or even like news. Most, most news, of the time, news, unless it's Fox News, were pretty good. <laughs> like, they're. <laughs> tell the truth. It was, it was fascinating to hear the difference between the different. Like, we have this thing on, on, I won't say her name. She who will not be named because she works for Amazon and will start doing things. Um,. Uh, you say, you know, I want to hear news and it'll start running through all the most recent news and it'll have, so back to back, you'll hear like NPR, which is very sort of left, not very left, but is very sort of more, I guess, more liberal in its news. And then the next up would be like Fox News, which is definitely more, if not far right. Um, and the difference in the stories and the focus of the stories are, was extraordinary. So definitely, I think you're right. Then we can't. I mean, but what do you do when you can't trust anything? Like what? Like what is that? How do we know oh, what to trust anymore? Any of it's false. Actually, I don't think it's just like 
they kind of just like bend the truth like for both yeah, sides exactly. even. Like, they're just changing yeah. the point of view with the perception of it huh yeah i think it's not you know i feel like with all the news channels i'm i'm pretty sure you're not supposed to i i know not i mean yeah, i didn't onward. i mean i don't think they're outwardly lying to you i think they're finding the opinion that they agree on and focusing on that opinion not showing other people's opinion Mm. So it looks like someone who you think was right and makes them look like they were wrong. That's from the opinion from someone who thinks they were wrong. But why do you think? Of... Why do you think the news does that though? Like, why would a news? Is it because they think that that's what their people want to hear? Um, yeah. I think, yeah. Honestly, yes. Huh. I think they're trying to appeal to their audience. Huh. Uh, it yeah. might also not be that. It, might, might, it also might be, for example, if they're more left-leaning or right-leaning, and they're going to they're going to agree on that side mm. more than the other. Mm. It's funny. Yeah, think... This sort of comes back to the bubble, right? This comes back to that we have the we all live in these kind of bubbles because. Google is telling Google is looking at searches for us that that reflect what we've searched before, you know, yeah. and, and Facebook and and TikTok and all that kind of stuff. So one of the things that came up about TikTok that the bandits and I have talked about before is the idea that unless you actively seek out, um, you know, people of color on TikTok or um, or LGBTQ two. Um, we talked about this last time. Yeah. Last, uh, on um, yeah. So I think. I, I don't I haven't been on TikTok much. Yeah. Um, I have seen the occasional TikTok and one I saw was or a lot of LGBTQ TikToks I have seen cuz I sometimes look at them I'm curious about what's going on in the community. Mm. They a lot of a lot of them are saying there's things called there's straight TikTok and there's like there's LGBT straight TikTok and um like, TikTok. okay. So basically depending on what you prefer um there's like basically different types of TikToks and straight TikTok as what people call is like all the people like dancing and doing like like all those like really TikToky dances. Mm. Yeah. And then what are the other ones doing? And then there's alt TikTok or like people could call it like lesbian TikTok or stuff like that mm. where it's like a lot more of different stuff that's not just dancing. So like anime is in alt TikTok and cosplay and like LGBTQ stuff is in lesbian TikTok and like people di ha like basically different types of TikTok mm. but there's only really one TikTok it's just how you start off is uh. I, think, I think the big problem with it though is you start off on a quote unquote straight TikTok I think yes I think that's the problem yeah, that's the problem, the problem is, is, is unless Unless you search up that alternate sort of alternated TikTok, yeah, um, yeah. we're not going to see any of those TikToks. Interesting. Even if they are when really popular. Off, when I first got it, my first thing that I ever did mm. because it actually gives you like a little quiz mm. on what you like. Mm. The first thing I ever started off with was a cosplay TikTok. Ah. Which I, which people would say is you started off in alt TikTok. Well, because the cosplay community is very sort of welcoming and open, right? So that's going to include yeah. a lot of stuff. Because, you know, let's face it, you know, a lot of, you know, people love dressing up. I mean, you know, who doesn't like putting on a cool costume or something yeah. at some point? Like, we all like doing it at Halloween. Like uh, this Halloween, my dad, he's a bit of an engineer. Um, and he actually helped, I helped him make these wings, like these dragon wings, and they could like move. Oh my and God! Was really? Awesome. That's fun and so, so cool. cool to make. And he was like explaining to me like we have to make sure this stuff is spaced out and put these things here so this tension doesn't happen. And it was really cool how everything worked. But it was so much fun to make, and the costume was really cool. Oh wow! You're gonna have to get us pictures or video of that because that sounds yeah, really yeah, cool. I, I can. I'll, I'll see if I can find one. Um, maybe we should talk to your dad sometime because I love the idea of like. The whole idea that, you know, this is all engineering, right? In order to build costumes, you're using engineering, you're using math, you're using all the, you're using basically all the science, technology, engineering, arts, and math stuff that, that people at school keep talking about everyone needing to do, right? 
Um, yeah, but they never do. <laughs> yeah, Fumbles Big Stupid says yeah. they don't usually wear costumes, but they would sure wear dragon wings. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Yeah. They, um, like, they weren't full on cosplay, but they were still pretty cool. I was very happy with them, and it was it was just so much fun. Oh, my God. There's nothing like it. I mean, we just did simple little foam grenades, right? Who are you, Baz? What was the game? Baku? Baku? What were you? Oh. Who are you? Sorry, you cut out. Bakugo. 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 Right. Oh, Even just that. We did that. A little bit of EL wire. You know, that electric light wire stuff. Um, really, really very fun. Very, very fun. I, I yeah. think cosplay is a great way into learning how to build and stuff. I mean, I think that's a... Jack, you do, you do that kind of stuff too, right? You do, you're doing stuff with your dad all the time. My dad? Yeah. Because he's... Wasn't he playing with like... What's the, what's the stuff you're, he was playing where he would like... That liquid stuff that sets and... Oh. He, wasn't he making stuff yeah, out... The epoxy. Epo- is it epoxy? Oh, epoxy. Epoxy fixes everything. Well, and he would, get this. So Jack's dad was using epoxy and he was talking about, he would sort of, he could embed things in the epoxy. So he was going to take all these old computer chips and like, and like float them in epoxy and it would just look really cool, I thought. That's so cool. Epoxy resin. We actually have that, but we're not doing epoxy. We're doing, um, we're putting them on a back, uh, backing of acrylic. Oh, spray painted all of them white. So. Oh, nice. So it's got a piece okay. of acrylic and then you're putting the actual things on it. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Are you going to put lights in it or anything? Or what's the... Um, you might put lights around the side. Because it, it was certain that it would probably cost like $1,000 worth of epoxy to actually do that. So. Oh, really? Oh, I Is epoxy expensive? I didn't know it was, ex- it was expensive. But like for a jug, you're at like 90 bucks. Oh, really? Like, for like a three oh. or four meter jug like a four liter jug at 90 bucks then like you'd probably need like 10 of those so wow it's like as expensive as animal crossing but maybe you could get like do you have animal crossing i'm not sure well no and that's and if you get larger quantities of it you can get it cheaper but who the hell's got room for a giant barrel of epoxy in their (laughs) in their garage (laughs) I know Jane would never let me do that. You just got a giant barrel of epoxy sitting around in the garage. The truck just backs up. Jane's like, what's that? Nothing, dear. Um, No barrel, but gallons. Um, You know what's funny about the the epoxy stuff is that even even the stuff, when you start making your own masks and stuff, all of that stuff is quite expensive, too. Yeah. uh, that's why I like cardboard. Cardboard just cardboard and foam is just so much is so cheap and easy to use, and it does so much of the stuff, yeah. you know. Um, I, I'm, if I could just, I just, I just um, since I'm watching this stream, I just keep looking over to the chat and I keep getting distracted and getting what we're saying because it's it's really cool just seeing the people talking on the side. I, I just well, that's there's like people that are saying they cosplay all the time and buying epoxy in bulk is expensive, but like. Um, it's worth it. It's just oh. <laughs> yeah, it's neat, isn't it? Look, that you can see why Baz and I are addicted to this because you've got this whole community out there, and we're very lucky. We happen to have a very like, like kind of very active kind of like they're interested in a lot of this stuff as well, um, and we also have Cal to keep them in order. Um, so, <laughs> so um, yeah, so so yeah, you'll see lots of, and that's kind of why I wanted to open it up, right? I wanted to open it up so that. That you can hear what Pac Mom has to say about her, because Pac Mom's got Pac Mom's got some interesting stuff as well, because she's a, she's a dental hygienist, um, you know. But she's all interested in the three D printing and statistics and all sorts of different stuff, right? So there's just, mm-hmm. and we got a lot of people on here who do 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 cool stuff. So yeah, you're absolutely yeah. right. It's a, it's it's like a great a great way of doing it. Um, and that's kind of, and I wanted to open it up because, like, as you know, as you bandits know, we're all in this little tiny little group here. And I feel, I started thinking like, wait a second, are we in our own little bubble? Like, are we just in a bubble of... I, I think it's great doing this. Wait, thing. Uh, David, I was thinking, should we make a Tech Bandits TikTok? <laughs> not if you make, not. not if you make me, not if you make me I dance. I never have been associated with TikTok and I never will be. <laughs> Jack is, dance, Jack is flatly refusing. Dance, dance. dance. <laughs> Well, I mean, I definitely like the idea of like, is there a way of making it of use? If only they could use, if only Baz could use his TikTok for good, um, you know. I mean, I can make an account. Um, make a tech. 
The only thing on the tech, the bandits TikTok would be a video of 3D printers running. Yeah, probably it's true. We could just have the we could just have the squirrel cam. Just have like high, yeah. just have highlights from the squirrel cam. That's what we need now. Um, the squirrel cam sort of reminds me that of um, our TikTok channel. Just highlights from the squirrel cam. Yeah, I, I could actually make it now. All right, oh. he's on it. He's working on it again. This is like this is what I find so funny. I find I just find it so funny that that, that this is what with tech bandits it always ends off going in like a million different directions. Um, and so like you know, so we start with. We start with burning uh, 3G towers. We're now talking about TikTok accounts. But it, but again, that's to me. But I feel like that's what makes it exciting to me. I think the best rant we ever went on, um, this was a few people have left. Um, but we were talking about staff and we were talking about um, if other animals could create societies like humans, would they be, would they be like a better society or worse society? Would they have the same problems? And what did you come up? You said, would there be? Are there evil dolphins? <laughs> we were trying to decide. Are there dolphins, <laughs> other dolphins that other dolphins do not like and avoid? Like, you know how there's someone that's, like, annoying and you generally, like, if they're mean or annoying or they're evil and you, like, avoid them? Are there dolphins? Are there annoying are dolphins? dolphins? Are there evil dolphins? dolphins? Like, there's I... gotta be. There's gotta be evil dolphins. So long and thanks for all the fish. Yeah. Is it, is it is it weird that I sort of want there to be evil dolphins, even if they probably take no, over the world? No, not at all. Why would it be? Like, is there like a Donald Trump dolphin out there or something? Like, is there like a you know what I mean? Like, all dolphins are, all dolphins are evil. Are... I'm sorry, not I'm not equating him with evil. I'm just saying, like, are there those like kind of you know are there these are those those big kind of personality? Jack knows what's up. Apparently, Gross, Grossy Grimm says that Jack knows what's up. So that's oh. to stay off to stay off TikTok, <laughs> basically. The best, um, best, best thing about the chat is also get take, it. Um, the best thing about tech, tech bandits I find is we take random ideas um, and just actually seriously talk about could dolphins actually be evil? You know, we still don't know if dolphins could be like the smartest animals in the world. Well, they're saying that we. Well, they're saying that they are much smarter than we thought they were. There was a time in my life I remember there was sort of a. It was very trendy to sort of like be all about how intelligent dolphins were, and they would teach them how to speak and count and do all these kind of things. Not to speak, but you know, to try to communicate with us and stuff. Um, but it is an interesting dilemma for us because we've always assumed that we are the top of the food chain, right? That we are the. You know, we're the smartest things on this planet, but are we? Okay. Here's the thing, though. I think in certain ways we are definitely smarter than other animals. But there's certain things that I'm pretty sure dolphins cannot build computers. I think we are better computer builders than dolphins. Well, dolphins might not uh, just have the technology to build computers. Well, and also yeah, yeah, dolphins don't pollute. But dolphins don't you pollute. Don't believe in technology. Cause is cause. It, didn't you hear? AirPods cause cancer. <laughs> well. But if you're, uh, so someone raised a really question, uh, an interesting thing here where they said that, um, uh, where I've lost it now. God, I can never, I suck at scrolling. Uh, okay. I had an, so Sally Sal says that they had an English teacher who had us all trying to find what we thought evil was. And no one could 100% agree with each other what evil was. Someone evil. I have no clue what evil is. Yeah, like what is evil? Because what evil to some people is not evil to others, right? make something bad to themselves and bad to others. Yeah. Huh. But that, I think um, Bertley may, uh, made a good point, which I think, I'm pretty sure is a quote, can't judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree. <laughs> I think that's yeah. the point. You can't judge, well, you know what? Maybe dolphins can't are judge, can't Yeah. Can't judge dolphins. I have to go eat lunch. <laughs> you go, Toby. I'd rather go All right, I'll be work back later. or go to school. Right. See you, Tobes. You can't judge dolphins by if they can make computers. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think um, it, judging animals on how smart they are compared to us doesn't make sense because I'm pretty sure we couldn't survive. Most of us probably couldn't survive a day out in the wild wilderness, but a wolf could. Hmm. So it's different. You know? Different yeah. skill set. Yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. So it's different. Everyone has different abilities. 
Like, I might be a good gamer, but a bad drawer. Mm hmm Or someone else might be a really good, um, uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. Really good at coming up with words. Yes. <laughs> no, I think yeah. I think you're right. I mean, intelligence is, but also you also are, are we defining intelligence as the, in the individual person or as like humanity as a whole? Because as a whole, I would say we look like a bunch of idiots right now because we can't even. Uh, yeah, I think so. Honestly, you, you know, yeah. <laughs> hurting our home. Um, yeah, I mean, like we've come up with a whole bunch of rules and regulations and things about stuff that that has nothing to do with the real world and what needs to be done in it. So. Um, I'm curious to know, I think we, like, what, why do we define ourselves as more intelligent? There's like, yeah, good and evil are a social conduct. Construct. Exactly. Yeah. And we, agree we made them up. Is evil not what society as a whole defines to be? Five people out of a thousand disagreeing doesn't make it, doesn't make it. Uh, not so in some situations. Yeah, no, it's fa absolutely I fascinating. Oh, wow, Torvald Duritz, thank you so much. Thank you. Oh. Wow, that's a hell of a raid. A raid with 122 people. Oh, boy, that's 122 <laughs> new perspectives on science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> raiders. Hello, I raiders. I, I'm, I'm so... Oh, okay, so Alma, just so you know, so a raid means that somebody was streaming, and they're, I guess they finished their stream, and they said, hey, let's go support this other stream. And so we have to okay. huge thank you to Torval, because it means that 120 of their friends have come to join us as well now. Um, and I'm sure we'll very quickly... We'll very quickly scare them all away, I'm sure. But welcome, raiders! Just a quick update for everybody who's just raided so you know what's going on. I'm doing a live Tech Bandit session, uh, which is uh, the science, technology, engineering, arts, and math inspiration sessions that we do. Normally, we do them privately on our Zoom chats. Um, but we're trying because we're... Tr we're opening it up. That's uh, Exactly. We're trying to open it up to people and see if we can get some more people and some more perspectives. And already... Alma, you got to say, this is pretty cool, huh? We're getting a lot of different perspectives on stuff. This is amazing. It's so fun. So, like like we said, um, I agree with the fact that evil isn't a thing. It's, yeah. it's like a social construct, I think you, um, you said. But then why do we obey laws and stuff? Then why don't I just go and, and kill people? Well, okay. I think... Because it's a oh. social construct. And well, exactly. Why don't you? Because... It's socially and, like, academically a bad thing to do. Well, and I don't want to. I would feel horrible. Also because, like, um, we, in our, um, I think, I don't think most people could bring themselves to kill another human being. Mm. Like, I eat meat, but I would never want to kill the thing I eat. I just could not do that. Well, like, I could not kill a fish and eat it. Well, Baz I'm has the solution to, to that, right, Baz? Genetically engineered food. Fish meat, no cow meat, actually. He's you, pretty dumb. They probably don't even know that they're dying. Gonna be honest. Yeah, I know yeah but wouldn't but but do they? I know they're dying. But I they must feel pain though. But they feel pain, right? Don't feel pain after they're dead. No, that's true. Wow. Um, great. But wait a second. But Baz, this is Baz's one of Baz's favorite topics because he's found out about this. They're they're working on. Apparently, they could take some just a cell sample from a cow, and then. You in a lab, they can. Well, you Baz, you explain it. You were the one who was telling me about it. Okay, so like, well, I'm not that good at explaining. I saw it on TikTok, but um, uh, <laughs> basically, what happens is that um, people, scientists, are able to take away enough muscle and cells from a cow, put it in like a petri dish, basically. Yeah. And let it grow for two weeks, basically, and then you get like the perfect size for like a hamburger or something like that out of meat and the cow hasn't been harmed and within those two weeks it will double the amount of muscles you'll be able to take from it for the next week that's so cool. but how like find, one of the most genius ideas i've ever heard of because then well, the thing is, it's not popular now because it's really 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 expensive oh is it yeah. well but yeah but the more popular it becomes the less expensive it becomes right yeah they clone the sheep you can't just like they have to develop it further. Like, right now, you can't just, like, all of a sudden move that to mass production. You have to have, like, a yeah, proper way of producing. Like, a way to well, make sure that it's always safe for well, everyone. 
make sure that it's this safe is too. This that we talked about last week. Also. Oops, I we stepped on something. I think I've just disconnected myself. There you go. All right, hang on a second. Okay. I just can't hear. That's all. We talked about robots and how robots are doing a lot of stuff now. And Let me. Oh, sorry. The problem I brought up was there's a lot of people that what robots are going to replace. Oh, is the get? Are the guests those still are too low? Jobs. Those are people's. Do those are people's jobs. And even if they're bad jobs, they still need those jobs. Yeah. I think before we replace them with robots, we need a way for them to get better jobs or more yeah, creative exactly jobs. Yeah, exactly what I've always been scared about. Let me just stop you for one second, guys, because there's some pro there was some problems with audio. So just so, so everyone knows, sorry, I, this is our first Tech Bandits that I've actually got the kids involved on this as well. So yes. I'm sorry, I'm still playing with the settings. I think uh, I think we're I've upped the volume now so people can hear. Um, okay, but good. these are my tech bandits that I'm talking to right not my tech bandits. Uh, I am their um, I am their nerd. Individual person, David. Exactly. <laughs> um, all right, so we're so so yes, we're talking about uh, about uh, about robot robots replacing jobs, right? Yeah. Is that where you were going with that? Because let, let me throw I'm one more thing at you about the meat thing, Baz, uh, and all of you is that. So they've done a lot of fish farming, right? Like they've they said, oh my God, we're running out of fish. What are we going to do? I know. We'll start raising them in farms like we do cattle. And one of the problems that they came up against was disease. You, you cram as many fish as you can into one place. They, you know, they, they come up with all sorts of horrible diseases and stuff. Ooh, so this be... was like how you were talking about this sort of relates to something someone said in the chat. So mm. someone said that are the, the GMO guys going to be okay with processed meat. And that's sort of like the dog breeders that aren't okay with formation. So you were talking last week about, was it last week? I forget, but about oh, it's a all friend, a blur now, but a friend who was working, I think actually the time we talked about, I think last week. Yes. I think it was two weeks ago that I'm mm -hmm. thinking of most of the stuff. Anyways, that's not the point. COVID-19 is messing with my brain. Time is an illusion. I'm eating. Um, <laughs> But basically, if I'm saying that, I mean, okay, so there are dog breeders, and dog breeders want purebred, like, animals. Like, right. They want purebred dogs. And, like, uh, your friend or something mm. made a way, like, Dalmatians were having this very deadly disease that put them in a lot of pain. Yeah, I and, think it was... Yeah, uh, the guy's name is David Ishi. He's a biohacker and a dog breeder. Another David. Another David. I mean, how can you go wrong, really? Yeah, amazing <laughs> guy. Amazing. You know what? If you guys want, maybe I'll ask him if he can come on and talk to us. That would be cool. Yeah? Yeah. All right, I'll try to do that. You said he made a way for these this disease to be rid. He engineered it so the Dalmatians don't have the disease. Yeah. Or he's—I don't know whether he's working on it, or whether he solved it, or but he was definitely that was he what he's working on. Working on it. But the dog breeders are saying that no, we don't want this because we want them to be purebred. Yeah. So they basically rather have, um, like, purebred dogs have the dogs in pain, but have purebreds, and just have a gen genetically engineered happier dog. Right. Which I think sort of connecting. I'm doing a lot of weird crossovering. But it's sort of connecting to the meat thing because I don't think the GMO people, as someone said, I completely forgot the username, so sorry. So the anti-genetically modified people. Some yep. people. I think some people accept they want real meat. And I think from an environmental standpoint, maybe mm. if we can get to work, that's the best option. But Well, like Jane only know. buys Jane only buys um, meat that has been, I guess, ethically raised or is free range, or I, I don't know exactly what she. I buy the cheapest meat. She buys whatever she thinks that. Oh, the, yeah. See, I think I think um, with meat is um, instead of buying cheap meat, you should have less meat meals a week and then get better meat and have a better meal of meat. In my opinion. Well, and at some point we may not have a choice. Like if the planet, if like, if we, if we, if we destroy the planet, we're going to have to figure out other ways. Like we're going to need that land for something else. Right. So, so oh, we yeah. have to figure out ways of, and that's, I guess that's part of the problem too, right? Is we're trying to make a lot of food for a lot of people 
on a consistent basis, that's not always the best thing for the animals, right? Or the planet. I mean, yeah, we need, that's why we I need think dolphins way, are smarter. We <laughs> need a way to... We need to we need a way to balance things. You have when you yeah. look when you're trying to change something big like getting rid of you know, like actual meat from animals. Mm. Yeah. Um, and is for me, it feel it would feel weird for me. But as long as my pork still tastes the same as <laughs> from a pig, I'm fine. Okay. But that's an I interesting think- thing, though. That's an interesting part of this whole like problem of like of you know of keeping the planet safe and, and, and sustainability and stuff is that at some point might we not have to say, I love that, but I can't have it anymore because it's so bad for the, for the planet. What about that? Me? We talked, yeah, well, yeah. Hey Jack, you were, you sounded, you sounded um, sort of more skeptical than most about the idea of like, of, of lab grown meat. What, what do you think it is? You think it's just that you think it's just a lot more to work out, or what's what's your take on it? I think there's a lot more to work. I don't think it's just that easy. Right. Yeah, I don't think I, it's I just take a clone of themselves from a cow, put it in a petri dish, shove it in a box for a few weeks, and then all of a sudden you got a hamburger patty. No, like, it's definitely not that I, easy. I, I agree. I don't think it's that like easy. Stuff. So I think, I think what's exciting about it though is the fact that they that have been able to do something that resembles meat. That. Yeah, I mean, and I think it's a it's a it's an example of what you can do, basically, right? A lot of people wouldn't eat unnatural meat because even if it's yeah. more healthy and good for the world, simply because it's not natural. Hard to argue with those people. Hey, it's hard to argue with anyone who's already made up their mind. <laughs> Generally, <laughs> right? honestly, I agree. sometimes I feel I think about these things and I'm like, thank I you, Zoom Gogito, really by the way. I don't know if I would want to do that. Like, I tell myself it's good, mm. but just hard to decide. I think what I would need is to taste that meat right. and decide that's what it's going to be and just decide that I'm not – I miss meat. I miss meat a lot. I feel like I just have you tried not? To, have you tried not eating meat for any period of time? Uh, I used to do not like meat at all. Oh, really? Well, I, I, okay. The only meat I would eat was like chicken or tuna. Right. Like most of the time I, I, my diet consisted of eggs, which are still one of my favorite foods. Right. And, um, uh, like milk, eggs and other stuff like that. And I, the reason I started liking meat, my dad says, is because I started growing more and I needed the protein. Right. Maybe that's an. I think that's another thing. Is the making sure you get the right protein and stuff. We eat meat because it's it tastes good. But we also eat meat because we need. We may need those protein. Those. That's our natural way of eating. So. Thank you very much, Zim Cognito. By the way, I'm I'm actually focusing. I'm sorry, I'm not focused on the on the on the Twitch chat. Um, because this is a tech bandit session, I'm sort of focused on the um. Uh, on the bandits right Bacon. now, but I but I very much appreciate your um, I, I appreciate um, that the, the you uh, your your comment. Thank you. I, I did see it. Um, bacon. <laughs> it's a full time job. Says another bacon. Thing, uh, yeah, exactly. Another thing with eating meat is I, I get you can be you can easily be vegetarian and have a healthy sustainable lifestyle. Yep. You can be vegan and have a healthy sustainable lifestyle. Yeah. I'm not saying you can't do that. I'm saying that is totally possible. Oh my god, someone just started Sokka. Okay, sorry. I just I just watched Avatar The Last Airbender, the entire series, and Same. love it now. Oh, you, amazing. you as well? Jack, have you watched this? The first movie for you, Mr. Rooster, made of me. I think I, I watched, be, like... It'll be Sokka, the straight talking veggies guy. Hang I on. can just get all <laughs> Hang on a second, Alma. What, Jack? So, Jack, you, you haven't watched it? You haven't watched it yet? I think I watched the first season a while back. Yeah, so yeah. did we, and then we... Like, we started, like, for, like big um, rebound. I don't know why. Well, I wanted to watch it again, because, like, I've been, like, been watching every anime. I'm oh now God. crying whenever I think of anime, because my one of my favorite series has <laughs> ended today, but... Um, oh, what was that? I hate my that, show. <laughs> besides, besides that tragedy, we're, we're okay! Yeah, we're okay. yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, I, I love and, looking at uh, I started watching okay. it again because I thought it'd be fun. 
And you really... I think I might watch Avatar The Last Airbender again, even though... Don't watch the movie. Oh, or at least only two books on no. book two. No one no one say anything big. No spoilers um, right. for anyone that wants right. to watch it or... All right. Yeah, no spoilers, no spoilers. Bert, Bertley's in book two now too, so they're with you. They don't want to, They don't want any spoilers either. Um, and I think I think I might. I th- yeah. That I think I might. I um, think I. Uh, I think I might watch it again because. Um, yeah. It's good. <laughs> it's interesting looking at the chat now because there's a lot of so so Jack and Cass is saying the reasons to keep eating meat are we are omnivores for a reason. Um, <laughs> And now has that, that, that's a good point. Are, but that's are we point. but are we omnivores? Like I'm I'm curious to know like if that's something that we are were we actually because I've heard I don't yes. know this. I don't know, but I heard that we were also originally we were that we were we were nuts and berries type thing. We were we were just hey, maybe we were, but I think for example in the Ice Age period there mm. wasn't many nuts and berries to eat, so they ate mammoths. Yeah, I saw Ice Age the movie and that that squirrel was always looking for that nut. I know how tough it was to play. Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I agree Squid. with the fact that we are omnivores for a reason. I mm. think also there's it makes sense. some people that are ve- I think at this point in time we can afford not to be omnivore. Right. Can be I see. we can we cannot eat meat if we want to. So it's like a, it's almost that, like a luxury. It is a luxury in a way because we don't need to eat meat to survive per se anymore. And if it is delicious. Are there places in the world, do you think, that they don't have that option? I'm curious. Like, is it... That's a good question. Actually, I think a thing is, a lot of some... I think there's a different... I think places in the world, there are places in the world that can't eat meat hmm. because they don't have... Like, some places don't have enough money to get meat. Right, right. I think it might even be the opposite. I like the idea of meat as a treat. So it's not something that you have every single day, but that it's you. So you're not using up such crazy amounts of resources. But I think I'm not sure I, I could agree. be totally vegetarian. Although the funny thing is, like we had a um, so we went to A and W the other day. And we had a burger. We had the Beyond Meat burger because I prefer. I actually prefer that burger because it's juicier and it, it's tastier to me. We still put bacon on it. <laughs> <laughs> so you know. Okay. Um, since um, people in the chat are obviously more educated than me in tons of topics, I, I see a lot of things coming up about how people that are vegan need to eat pills in order to get proper vitamins. Because <laughs> so, may, so maybe, maybe um, who who said omnivores? Maybe you are right. I think he, I might be right, and if that is true, which I believe it is, I'm so trust if what if that. what is true, if what what's true, the fact that some vegans need to eat pills to keep. And, ah, okay. Uh, I think um, because they're not getting what they need from their their diet. Yeah, um, that's an interesting top. That's an interesting thing that I've never actually heard before. So I'm going to trust. I'm going to trust the chat because I've seen it. I've seen it. There's Don't trust two, the chat. Three Remember three sources. Is it no? I just have two three sources of people. Oh, no, okay, talking. fine. Super quickly I, back on the meat topic, my yeah. mom actually just texted me and she has given me an actual uh, little document whole thing about. You disappeared. About uh, the meat topic. Oh, but, oh, wait a sec. She's listening too? Be yes, careful. She is. Be careful. Jane's listening. Everybody, watch out. Best behavior. My wife is listening. Um, <laughs> so. Um, okay, so what's this? A Portuguese beef meat is a luxury, uh, yeah. because cow... Wait, actually, sorry, I take that back. So, my, um, my great, my grandpa, Uncle Brian, was a pioneer in genetically modified food, developing a strain of rice that saved nations from famine. Oh. Wow. And being able to grow in less deli- uh Delicate circumstances. Brian Loman. Happy meat free range with no antibiotics fed by their natural diet. Right. So he genetically wow. mod- he gen- genetically modified uh, rice so that it could it could grow and and uh, and feed massive populations. But again, we're in a situation now where people are saying they don't like genetically modified food, whatever that means. Yeah. Okay, but here's the here genetically modified. Here's the thing. But I think we should be more aware of like. People are fine with eating candy, but I'm pretty sure that has more chemi- 
more chemicals in it than like some genetically modified foods. Like, <laughs> That's so meatless, true. Meat, yeah. Meatless meat burgers. I don't think they have. I think I think a big thing people are scared about isn't the fact that they're genetically modified. I think it's fact that you don't know what is genetically modified. They don't. So yeah. I saw I seen that I saw this YouTube channel and I saw she said this person said a very good thing that was if I told you this stuff was in if I told you whatever is in cake right in right. most cakes you would say no I don't like that it's you're scared of it but then she said but then if I told you that's baking powder or baking soda the ones you use in cake I right. forget I'm sorry but, um sodium bicarbonate. The, isn't that yeah, what it's yeah. I think that's what she was talking about. And she mm. said, um, if I told you that's baking soda? Is that mm. baking soda? Yeah, I, th I, um, I, th I think it is actually, yeah. Or if, yeah, if, you're, yeah. If, you're, if, if they told you they're baking soda, then you'd be fine. Right. I also saw a picture of a post where someone said, uh, like, our vaccines, vaccines are so bad. Look at this list of all these chemicals. And they... They listed all these things, and someone said under it, "Oh my God, you're so right. That's why I'm anti-vax." And then the person replied saying, I "Realize I just listed the chemical properties of an apple." <laughs> ha ha ha! That's good. <laughs> but it's interesting though, because it comes back to the five G thing again, doesn't it? Where if people knew what exactly it meant by genetically modified, I mean, you know, someone says uh, it was bad code swish is saying is saying that you know we've been genetically modifying our foods for centuries. Like we like that's you know his example was take a look at Michelangelo's pictures of watermelons and compare it to the modern fruit. Almost all the fruit we eat has been genetically modified through selective growth. So that's just another form of genetic modification. It just takes a lot longer, right? If we are just speeding up the genetic modification process, like dogs are genetically modified technically because there's they're breeding them to get a certain type of dog. Absolutely, and look what we've done to those poor dogs. Is Toby still here? Yeah. Oh, okay. So is Toby I back? Because Toby's dog is genetically engineered, basically. I was talking with someone um, that I don't know as much, but I was on a stream with someone that I've been, like, watching ever since they started uh, streaming. And they actually have a friend who has a dog that was rescued because the genetic modification went out so badly the dog wasn't able to breathe or move so that they had to have to have, like, four surgeries to be, allow it to breathe by using this plastic tube. And I found that was so, like, disgusting, but also amazing. Someone could fix something that a human did. Well, yeah, we've bred, because of the way you breed dogs, and I wish we've got to get David Ishii in here. I'll have to bug him. I, I don't want to guilt him into anything. But, uh, but David, you got to join us on one of these. Um, because we've genetically, so basically by breeding the dogs with other dogs of their similar dogs, you get more and more sort of mutations happening, right? And that's what people like the big floppy skin around the face of the of the bulldog or whatever. But that means that it doesn't it has a hard time walking. It has a bad back. It doesn't breathe yeah. very well. Pugs, yeah. same issue, right? Yeah. And like I think Oh that's interesting. Crossgrim says that they say apples were more like a potato a couple hundred years ago. How weird is that? You're gonna have to check that, but if that is true If that's true, that's pretty neat though, because they have a similar texture. Yeah, love potatoes. Who here like, likes potatoes? I love potatoes. Well, when they're I, fried and covered in. I'm gonna say chili. something. I don't love mashed potatoes, and I have a good reason for it too. Okay. You don't like mashed potatoes? I, listen. <laughs> well, I, I okay. I can't. Can I say something? I don't know. I haven't tried them in a while, and I should again. But I'm sort of basically. I had to have. I had to have medicine because I was sick um, the week before Christmas last year, which was tons that of fun. Sucks. But, um, we wish you a I Merry was better. Christmas. I, luckily, I was better at Christmas, so I could at least do some stuff. But I still had to take medicine just so I was didn't get sick or whatever again. Right. And and um, basically, um, the I really hated the medicine, so we put them in mashed potatoes. And now it's ruined hide. mashed potatoes for you. The mashed potatoes enhanced the flavor of the medicine. Right. I threw up. So um So now you don't like mashed potatoes. Okay, here's the thing though. I think by this point 
I could probably I'm gonna try I could probably try try them again and I'd probably like them. Well get last this. Year, I did that last with... year. Mm. I wasn't still fully bored all like I've learned I've liked I like a, way more things now. I, I tell you to, that like, state I got I sick. I love oh sorry, sorry, I keep cutting you off. No 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 continue. I got yeah, sick no. once and I had just eaten a bag of sour cream and onion chips and I cannot I have a real hard time with sour cream and onion still to this day. And yeah, I was probably yeah, yeah. Baz's age. You can never have sour cream and onion chips. Yeah, so I was sad. Baz's that's, age. That's sad, though. They're, that sour cream and onion's a pretty good type of chip. Um, it's interesting, though, because taste is another thing that's completely relative, too, right? Like People say, oh, I don't like this and I don't like that. And they go, how can you not like that? But we we know for a fact, right, that people taste things maybe not completely differently, but certainly differently, Right. I mean that it that it entirely depends on 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 sort of the uh, uh, the the, um, the the sensors on your tongue and stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. Munchkin oh, cats. I, I saw, I saw really? some, someone that says, "Is that why banana flavored candies taste different than normal bananas?" Um, and I don't know what that's a reply to, but I agree that banana. Maybe it's just me, but banana flavored candies never taste like bananas, and I always but hate but them. But you can tell the banana. You can still tell they're banana, though. Yeah, it's got a banana. I mean, you can take like the main grown up. chemical in the banana. They take the well. Let, let Jack finish. What was that? Chemical in the banana that gives it flavor. Yeah. And then they probably make something like that in a candy. But you're like, right, though. It has a banana quality to it, but it's never quite yeah. banana, is it? No. I wonder the essence of banana. <laughs> Cal, I, I think, the essence of banana. I think the big with bananas is unlike like uh like uh apple it doesn't have juice right so it's hard to get the flavor from it mm. well, I, I find a lot of flavor in it a lot at the time a lot of flavor in yeah, apple but you can't have banana juice you would have a banana smoothie how do yes. they make yes. candies yes. that taste like something else do they actually put they don't actually put apple in apple candies right no, how do they no, no. how do they mimic that flavor i'd be very curious to know how they do that and like, how do you even test that? You know what I mean? Like, how do you go like, okay, what are the what are the various different ingredients that make something taste like apple or make something taste I like banana? I don't know. Isn't that yeah, weird? Yeah, my though? mom just my mom just chimed in. She's like, the flavors are chemicals, Alma. And I'm like, no. yeah, but how do you find the right chemicals? Like, do you do you take so I guess do you take a do banana just, and break it down into what chemicals are in it and then go with that? Or do you just take a thing? Hmm, this sort of tastes like banana. Here, try this mixed with this, and it's like, make them that made them sick. Okay, that tastes like banana, but I guess we're not going to use that. So Aaron Cross says though they reproduce the molecule which makes the flavors. It's chemical engineering. I'm sure they use oh. esters, but there must be more esters. That's what that means. I prefer banana yeah. when they are a little green. Oh no, really, Birdly? I can't do green banana. Oh. I heard the green bananas were bad for you. I like what bananas have freckles. Those are the best bananas. Which which ones? I think, I think what they mean is the bananas that are yellow, but they have that tint of green. And I, you yeah. know, yeah. honestly, I will yeah. definitely eat a banana like that. They're they have a nice. They're not as mushy, and they're also very. They they have a weird sort of. I can't do mushy bananas. Less, they're less. They're less sweet in a really. They're nice. Um. Oh. um brown someone spots. Said they yeah. Their own artificial drinks. You make your own artificial drinks? Who does that? Uh, I, uh, let me see if I can find Oh, there you go. Off, 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 off SSD. Um, so how do you make your own oh. artificial drinks then? The greener the banana, the less sweet it is. Brown is maximum sweetness and maximum gushiness. I hate how, I hate, I hate, it, get, I hate it when it gets all squishy. <laughs> that's how, that's what you use in, um, banana bread. Oh yeah, but that's good in banana bread because it makes the bread kind of like nice and moist. Do you guys remember Soda Stream? Do I remember Soda Stream? We live on Soda Stream. We, oh. I don't even drink flat water anymore. I, I remember um, we were Soda Streaming something. So your and own recipe. Yeah. Their own recipe. And, and um, my friend had never like... Hey, Heartline. Really, my friend, they were, they never, they didn't have a Soda Stream or theirs was quieter or something. Yeah. And they put it in. And, and my other friend, they put it into the soda stream thing. It turned on, 
And when she took it out, my friend like jumped like a foot in the air, and it was because it makes a hell of a noise too, doesn't it? Uh. Um. Here's an interesting little sideline. Sorry, I was thinking about drinks. I was thinking about cool drinks, and I was thinking about how do you keep drinks cool. And I was thinking we just got a we got we get food delivered. I'm sure. Do you do you guys get food delivered as well now that we're in? Stay away from. Um. Actually, speaking of food delivery, Mm. no, we do not because in fact my mom just went out like. Like just came back a while ago from shopping. She, the the thing with food delivery with my mom is she likes to pick her products specifically. Yes, so does if Jane. You ask for as if she gets bread. She if she asks for bread mm. and can't get what specific bread, or if she wants a lot of things like with. I make my own bread now. Ooh, it's great. Actually, I've tried um, making like flatbread, and the first time we made it. Um, I'm great. At, um, um, we didn't. I forgot. To, I didn't see the part of the instructions that said don't add all the yogurt. <laughs> don't like. Don't add all. You can add a bit of yogurt, and if it needs more, add more. Right. So I added all the yogurt, and then to make it drier, I added t- uh, more flour. Wait a second, and Alma. You didn't read the instructions. I did. <laughs> Okay, I made a mistake. Oh, believe me, I've made a few mistakes with the bread. The number of the, some of my bread has been so hard you can't even get your teeth into it. Yeah. And, other, and other ones. No, it was. <laughs> Baz is in the background. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. I know that one. Um, what was my point? I was going to go. Oh, right. So sweet things, delivery food. The reason, one of the things that Baz and I are really enjoying now is that because it's so hot out, they'll deliver a lot of the frozen stuff with dry ice. Right? I, I, yes. So you take it out of the package and you put it in the sink and you put, pour hot water on it and you get like that foggy coolness like in like in dance clubs oh. or spooky movies. So next time you get something frozen delivered, check. Like if you get ice cream or any of those things delivered, that should, that's a, actually that's a trick for everybody out there. You want something for your kids to play with that they could really hurt themselves with. Um, get the dry ice out of the, out of the packaging that comes with, um, with food delivery. Boil some water? Yep. Yeah, Baz, you did it. What do you think? It was it wasn't that hard, right? No, I loved it. And then, like idiots, or like an idiot, I put the dry ice in the freezer in the hopes that it would like last longer. But it was it it was gone by the time we got back to it, right? <laughs> uh, be careful with CO two. I know it. That stuff can burn. They use it to burn like to burn moles off and stuff, don't they? They use dry oh, ice. Off, off, yes. Wait, off, off, I don't know how to say your name, um, but. They have just um, in the chat how oh. it works. So, All right, what do you got? Special flavoring, but the secret to get the proper f- flavor is the acids and sweeteners. Oh. There's a lot of different types, and if you miss the proportion, you ruin the flavor. For example, Pepsi is more acidic flavor than Coke. Like strawberry, that I usually put more, more citrus than melon. Oh, interesting. That is so cool. So it's mainly the yeah. acids. That's interesting. Wow, but that, and I, and like that makes sense though because like lemon is way more acidic than a melon. Huh? Or, like he said, a strawberry is more acidic than a melon. Yeah. And fragrant with spice has got a scar on their hand from dry ice, so that's a lesson wow. to all of us. Um, yeah. that must have sucked. Uh, Zeno uh, says that their food only arrives in just regular grocery bags. I think because it's like 30, was it 32 or 34 degrees the last couple of days? 34 yesterday. Yeah. So we had to. So basically. Got up to like 36 at one point. Oh my sure God. It's to. insane. It's insane. Banana flavored candy is flavored from a banana that went extinct about a hundred years ago. What? Really? What? Oh, that, that fake news. That's gotta be. Well, look it up. Check it out. We make ice cream with dry ice. <gasps> you do? Oh, wait a oh, second. Yeah, you can do that. You can do that. That's like a fast way. But isn't that liquid ice dry ice? Don't they use liquid dry ice for that? Is that... Val, can you explain that to us? Because I've always thought that was so cool. Mad Murph. Nailed it. I'm <laughs> not sure what that means. Did we, did we ignore you, Jack? Sorry. Jack and Kaz got him for you, says Harklight. Ah, thank you, Harklight. Was well, as Jack and Kaz been posting that a lot? Um, hope they see this. Cavendish bananas are genetically identical. 
Each banana you buy in the store is the clone of the one next to it. Every banana plant being grown for export is really part of the same plant, a collective organism larger than any other on Earth, far bigger than the clo what is it? clonal clonal groves of aspens. I don't know what the clonal groves of aspens are. How wild is that? I vaguely remember reading an article about that. I don't mean dry ice, sorry, offset. I mean liquid nitrogen, that's oh, what I mean. Did sorry. You know each cell in your body exchanges seven years, so every seven years your body yeah. is a completely new body. Except for your brain, I think, right? Yeah. Well, is your heart, do your heart, does your yeah, heart cells? Each cell, like, replaces itself in, like, Holy not smoke. even milliseconds, so you don't feel a thing, but it's slowly, like, changing. So, Just imagine, in imagine. Two, in two years, well, basically in one year, I will have a completely different set of body than I do today. Really? I want a new body than, today, thank you. No, no, no. Can I get a new body too? No, no, no. The only day I'd have a completely new body. Oh, I would never have a completely new body. Now that I think of it. You never. Because okay. they go away. Because they. Well, because you don't lose them all in one go. Thing. Yeah, you don't. That's what I. That'd be that'd be really, really funny. That really would be really just like really funny. just you shed just randomly. Like, just we're standing there, and it's like. Yeah. Well, sorry, that's sorry. kind of just standing that, there. It's kind of what happens with like, spiders and stuff, right? Don't they? Yeah, you're just standing there. It's like, oop! It's time to shed. Not spiders. Sorry. Uh, one like, day. I don't know why I said spiders. I meant lizards. One day you just wake up and shed a dead human body. Just yeah. ooh, like or invasion of the, the body snatchers. <laughs> we were just talking about that. <laughs> one day you just like completely just disintegrate and then re. Like, come back. <laughs> well, one of the things that's kind of neat is that they talk about how, like, cells, the way cells, um, the way cells multiply is they bud, right? Like, so a little bit of the cell yeah. pops off, and then it cuts it off in a way, and they go off on their own. And then, and then the other, they can all do that. But, but where that bud has formed, there's, like, a little bit of scarring. So there's a limit to how many times a cell can replicate, right? Mm. And so once you get to the point where there's more yeah. scar than more scar than cell, you're no longer able to bud like that or it becomes harder for it to bud. So I'm guessing that has something to do with the aging process yeah. as well, right? I'm guessing. Uh, hey, oh. Lady Jane is classying up the place. Where is where is Jane? Is Jane in here as well? Mom, I, I told her that she should definitely come in and join us. She should, because she's smart. Uh, typing to, to, to quick and not checking, LOL. What? Typing to quick and not checking. They're I saying... See. All right. The banana taste thing. Okay, get this. So, Beekland says, the banana tasting thing. Up to the 1950s, the most common banana was not the Cavendish, but the Gros Michel, also known as Big Mike. So maybe it's not just Big old Mike. people being old and curmudgeon -y. Maybe it's true that bananas were tastier back then. Oh, wow. So, however, the, Cro the Gros Michel was wiped out by a fungus. I did hear about that. Fusarium Oxysporum. Doesn't that sound like a? It sounds. I always. I always think of um, Harry Potter. Fusarium like oxysporum, to be exact, which caused Panama disease. The fungus attacked the roots of the banana plants and was also resistant to fungicide. So to compound the problem, all Gros Michel were identical. I guess were identical. Um, anyways, that is fascinating. Well, I, that's sort of like um, what happened in Ireland. The what most happened? basic level, like the, all the they had one breed of potatoes, so they all got infected, and all the potatoes died, and a great potato famine happened. Really, that was the cause of the great potato potato famine. I'm not. I'm not for because sure. they didn't have a diverse. They didn't have a yeah. diverse selection of potatoes. I'm, can someone just say if that's what happened? They didn't have a diverse enough potatoes, and that's why they all got wiped out. But. That's, but that's an interesting point, though. Wait a second. If we start doing things like if we start making lab grown meat, isn't there a concern there that what if we if we get something wrong? Is there a possibility that we could infect cows or that we could? Is there is there a possibility that by not having multiple different strains of cows being produced or we'd have to watch out for that? Right. Otherwise, we could have we could run into the same problem. You could have like one virus could wipe out all of your meat supply. Okay, so Fumble mixed stupid one said, "Well, kind of the English forced them to grow the potatoes." Oh, so, um, so yes, that that is technically what happened. And the English forced them to grow the potatoes because 
What? Because that was the only thing they could survive on, right? It was cheap. They wanted potatoes. Or was it just cheap, good, cheap food? Yeah, it was. The it Asgard was cloning good. issue all over again. Okay. <laughs> You're getting into the Stargate world now. Watch out, Alma. You don't want to go down the. You don't want to go down the wormhole. Okay. Um. Yeah. Um. So Vice did a documentary on the current banana and the fact that someone. Something similar is attacking similar them is right attacking. now. So we could lose these bananas as well. I gotta say, I'm I'm I get a little nervous if there's not bananas in the house. Like no, I, I I love bananas. They're like my go to you know you I go do? I hate bananas. Oh if I'm starving and I just need to eat something quickly, a banana. Yeah, yeah, same. Or banana and, but and I peanut, like peanut butter. Peanut butter, yeah. Banana, peanut butter, oh. and a fried sandwich. Yeah, the amazing. Or banana and honey um on a sandwich. Um, Aaron Cross says that so well it sounds like the famine was something was also due to bad political choice and the wrong way of cultivating them interesting oh so like they were so they were forced to grow too much and um they were only cultivating the potatoes that's why huh. they didn't have enough food is that oh, what I'm right. this is what I'm getting for it but I'm probably wrong and again look not to I'm not to question anything that's happening on the chat here but again I think this is a great jumping off point for people. If there's stuff that you're interested in, by all means, look it up. And if next time we talk, let's find out what you what you discovered, if it's something. Um, yeah, fried banana. I love fried bananas. Absolutely love. They or do fl- have banana flavor popsicles. and They do. Yes. Okay. Does anyone, does anyone else know those, like, monkey pops where it's, like, banana flavored ice cream inside jello? Like, oh, God. They were just those are so good. disgusting. Oh. Really? Sounds Jack, you like them? 10 out of 10. Really? They're great. Uh-huh. Oh. I think an animal cake with three shots of espresso. That's uh, what really? espresso. I love espresso. going off. A banana milkshake. So in other words, a banana, banana, the, oh, banana muffins. I love banana muffins. Uh, oh, I banana. think what's he talking about? Says Grey Animations. What the hell is he talking about? Um, you didn't banana. like Jello. I mean, Jello. Oh, well, I- I like blueberry muffins and rhubarb muffins. Sorry. I've really been enjoying making bread. I've got to say, I don't know what it is about it, but there's something, I feel like I'm getting something for free. David, how are your yeast beasts? The yeast beasts, well, I've got rid of all the yeast beasts and I now just do, well, they all, I mean, I I raised them for a while, but it was starting to get really stinky and some of them went bad. So I got rid of them. (laughs) And then I started using just the, I've just started doing the instant making of bread. But what I want to do now next is I do want to do like a sourdough, which will involve new yeast beasts. Oh, and I forgot to show you this. Baz, how could you let me forget? Where'd I put it? What? The 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 new USB edition. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Um, gee, I wonder why I can't find anything in here. So I have this, <laughs> I have this microscope, right? Ooh. It's a USB microscope. So you plug it oh, into the computer. And I thought we could have a squirrel cam and a micro cam. Because hey. I did some footage of yeast. I got some footage of yeast, like yeasting, <laughs> fermenting. Um, so, um, uh, and it was, it was not that exciting. But it was kind of neat that it, because it grows so, it, 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 the, the size increases so much that the footage is like, it's like, it's like here in the bottom, and then all of a sudden it's like, whoosh, and it just like covers the screen. It's like a horror movie. Um, yeast beasts come the, to attack. Exactly, the yeast beasts attack. It's like something out of the Doom Patrol. Um, no. uh, so, uh, so I'm going to try to figure out if there's a way of getting this attached to the computer as well. Although I got to say, I wish I could show you the ridiculous amount. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I've got twelve USB things plugged in right now. And it's on a laptop and then a USB hub. Eyes of the yeast beast. Yeah. The eyes of the yeast beast are upon no, it has to, All horror movies have to have short and short and and um confusing titles. The Endless. I watched a movie called The Endless last night, which I've got to say I really enjoyed, and I think Stargate fans would like it too, because it deals with these weird little time bubble Ooh. things. So I would highly recommend The Endless. It's not. Red is it, Stream has been recommended. Is it kid friendly? I think. Law it, Rise of the Yeast Beast. Yeah, that's it. Okay. That's what and happens. That's, that's the one. We it definitely. It either has to be short and sweet, 
and not make sense or it has to have like a really long complicated one that's really true. long complicated title yeah oh oh senegar is hungry for bananas now you see food always comes up in these things in some way shape or form right baz knows okay. i'm a big fan of food um, I, can i go off on a completely different topic that's just something i've been sort of wanting to say you mean squirrel yes of course Okay, so it's it's sort of it, it's not really relating to tech in any way. It's just a very crazy thing that happened. Okay. Basically, I was socially distancing with my friend in her backyard, and we were sitting on a bench, like apart from each other. Right. And in her backyard, and it was sort of late, like eight-ish, like <laughs> maybe it was pretty late, like dark out. Right. And they have a dog. Right. So I was sitting on this bench and I felt something paw at my leg. And I thought, oh, it's the dog. And I'm like, hi. And I was looking down to like maybe pet the dog or oh, no. just throw the dog. And I looked down and I'm like, dog got, like I thought the dog was laying down. It wasn't a dog. It was, it was a raccoon. <gasps> like, a, seriously. It a, was raccoon a raccoon was pawing your foot? No, no, no. My really? leg, it, it pawed at my leg. And then. Okay, so this is a very good example of fight and like a flight. Uh, my in my instincts, I jumped up, I screamed, and I like ran to the back gate because the raccoon was walking the way to the the front back where the adults were sitting. Right. I ran to the back gate and I like ripped it open, and my and my friend and my sister was there too, and they're like, "What's happening?" And I'm like, "Raccoon!" I like ripped open the gate and I like ran up the street around like up the street around to the front and way like, to not overreact <laughs> what like but it was so Alma I'd scary. still be screaming I would still be screaming I, today I, I would be like petting it I just like hug no it and god laugh. they're terrible things they're terrible I, things I don't hug it. I why don't do you think it. I use them as a logo for you guys they're horrible terrors of beasts <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Raccoons are vicious, and and the thing is, my mom said that later that they pro it probably wouldn't have attacked me because if it approached it because it approached me. So hey, maybe you're just a bag of meat to it. Like I mean, someone said we're meat too, right? It's, I think what it is. I think my mom says that someone must have been feeding raccoons because there's no other reason it would come up to be in paw at my leg. Yeah, that is weird. It must. It's, <laughs> It probably, yeah. yeah, it must be used to getting snacks or something. And, and yeah, but I, you can have it and tame it, and then you have a best friend buddy. Okay. I, I don't know how good they are as pets, I, though. They're not really they're meant not, to be pets, right? I, seen, I saw a TikTok, and um, <laughs> um, oh, no, I saw a YouTube video on, like, weird pets, and this one person had a raccoon as a pet, and he was really good, and he's very loyal. I Look. I, I, someone just said, uh, oh, and... Just in Rocket would be insulted and touched by that. Rocket, they're right. Rocket, Rocket Raccoon. Yeah. Because I know that raccoons are vicious. And destructive. And, and I've never been that close to raccoons. So I it just, I think it, it, like, technically, if I wasn't in such a panic state of mind, I wouldn't have, I would probably have. Yeah, if it had more, if it, But it surprised me because I didn't even, like, see it coming. Well, and it's dark and thought, it's, yeah. And my first thought was just raccoons. Vicious dogs get hurt. Raccoons run. A uh, panic. Go go go. My fear, honestly, is more is more of I'm more scared of skunks. I just don't want to get skunked. I can't stand that smell. Like it drives There's me freaking. There's another story about the same friend in the same backyard. Yeah. Uh, her dog got sprayed by a skunk. Oh. In her backyard. And, what, and and for some reason, you use like tomato juice or something to get it off or something, don't you? Yeah, I think so. Uh, also, have you, well, it's like Jack, say... have you ever had your? Has your dog ever been um, uh, skunked? Um, no. It was close one time. One time. Oh yeah. I wasn't there, but my dad was like, walking him. Yeah. And then they were just like walking up to the front of the house. Mm. And we have like a our house is set back pretty far, so it was, yeah, like, yeah. a decently long walkway up to the front. And then there was a skunk there. My dad practically, like, just, like, sort of running and, like, dragging the dog inside. <laughs> yeah, because you don't like, want to. And the oh door my. was sitting open, too. 
So well, if that skunk would have sprayed it, we've gone in the oh, house. Oh god! The dog and... Well, we have this. This somewhere there's a skunk near us. I think it's living under the neighbor's porch, but they've just had their porch what? done, so they've probably it's now probably living under yeah. our porch. But um, <laughs> but when it when you get that smell, even if it just comes in the root in the like even if the window's open and it wafts in for a second and you close the window. That smell, stay. I'd love to know what the chemical makeup of that is, because you want. I'm telling you, you want to. We were talking about like non, uh, like non um, uh, lethal force. Like if you want to disperse a crowd without lethal force, I would say maybe a skunk would be the way to do it. Then your whole yeah, thing would like skunk. If you're being um, attacked I'm, by someone, spray. Like, see if you can like come up with like an artificial skunk. Another thing I want to say is I do <laughs> like I do like raccoons. I just. I love you know, them. Like they're, they're they're even if they are vicious sometimes I get it because they're wild animals. But I don't like like in fact my I'm pretty sure my username that uh, my very quick username on Discord is actually Noodle the Raccoon. Why Noodle? Second, I don't know. You're Noodle the Raccoon. Does that mean you're Noodle the Raccoon forever now? Is that the choice? You have to stick with it forever. Nah, you can change your name, but you can change it. Hey, Lord. also another thing. Yeah. Is um that's also my like Minecraft. Username. Ah, so if anyone sees oh. Noodle the Raccoon doing bad things on a server, you'll know it's Alma. Bad things. <laughs> hey, Lord totally Chunky, where badly. did you get where did you yeah. get Lord Chunky from? Um, I always like hearing where people get their their usernames from. Um, you just... oh, I know. Um, so in the game that I used to play a lot more, that I still play a bit now, Rainbow Six Siege. Oh yeah, yeah. Um. There's kind of this meme. There's like this op, like there's this operator or character that's horribly bad. Yeah. And everyone makes kind of like jokes about them. It's right. Kind of funny. And their name is Tachanka or whatever. They're like this ah. Russian character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you see. So the Chanka became chunky. Off that. So the Tachanka came. Like, huh. And everyone's made like jokes about him being like a god or something like that. Yeah. Lord Chunky the god. god. No, it's it's God Tachanka, right? right? Well, my Roddy oh, Roddy Lord Rhino. Roddy That's Rhino me. in Minecraft That's was most of it is from. My, so interesting. Okay, so you got yours from from Rainbow Six Siege. My yeah. my Roddy Rhino was I wanted I put Roddy in obviously because of Rodney uh, McKay from Stargate. But um, but the Rhino I just liked I like the idea of Rhino and that's become like a like if you go on our server now there's like Rhino stuff everywhere. It's hilarious. I love it. Remember <laughs> when Baz and I remember Baz when we first started playing Minecraft we I used to build like big Rhino I used to try to build Rhino shaped. Fortresses yeah, and, things. and um, the other thing was that you would make, um, so, oh, someone says, so where did Iron Ham come from? Actually, my dad and I were thinking of names, right? And yeah. our mine was for Minecraft as well. Super Pig was already taken. Right. And my dad was like, oh my God, I have the perfect name. How about Iron Ham? Because it's like Super Pig, where it's like a superhero and a pig. And, um... But it actually, it was my dad who came up with the idea of Super Pig. Of Iron Ham. Iron Ham, yeah. Yeah, well, Super Pig, yeah, Super Pig was taken, wasn't it? Yeah. Although I think Iron Ham was taken as well, wasn't it? No, Iron Ham was taken. It wasn't, no, so I guess you did get that. It was so. taken. Oh, my ass. God. Jack and Kaz says that their grandpa got something called Liquid Ass for Christmas Oh, once. you don't know what that is? Oh, yes, you, that. You, you know yeah, about this? You know what that is? Yeah, it, it was meant as like a prank sort of thing for people, and they actually started using it in like train people doing medical like surgeries. Real on like feel I um, like surgeries when they're like in the field because the smell inside a human body is really bad. And interesting. And, <laughs> So like when they're doing a surgery, they just like spray some liquid ass. They spray. Them. They would spray oh some in the God. fake dummies. To <laughs> because some of the people would go out onto the field and like faint from the smell because they hadn't experienced it. It yeah. actually th this thing, this product actually like. I did a show. I did a show once, um, and I played a I, I played a a, a, a coroner, like an assistant coroner, and so uh -huh. the first season we shot in a morgue with real dead bodies oh. there. Like oh. we we didn't use real dead bodies, but they were real dead bodies because it was a real functioning morgue. And people used to put uh, Tiger Bomb, you know, that kind of that menthol stuff, used to put it under their nose because the smell, there's a certain smell to a dead body that no matter where you went in this building, there was this smell. So um, 
Yeah, that was the. I remember that. And then we then we, I think we moved to a, a, a set after that. But but yeah, for the first season, and the guy, the guy who worked there used to go like, "Hey, come here, kid. You want to see a body?" And he'd like literally like wheel out body, bodies and say, "Look, he's been in the water for ten days." And it's like like all these like it was. I remember like being horrified. But this guy, yeah, Kung Fu the Legend continues. Yeah, um, uh, and uh, yeah, so I actually saw re- that's the first time I ever saw a real dead body. Was, was was actually in the morgue and it had been in the water for 10 days. Let me just say, hey. it, it was not pretty. Uh, well, you've never been to a funeral before, David? Before then? I've been to funerals, but they're all closed caskets, right? They're never... They're oh, like, really? I've never seen an actual... Have you? So you've been to a funeral where there's actually like a dead body there? Um, yeah. Really? Actually, one... Only one I've been to... Well, actually, fun, fun story. Um... <laughs> Not really fun, but maybe in grade four. Mm. Um, so in the summer, my uh, grandpa died. Mm. Um, that's why I was actually that because I actually missed part of a vacation. We were going to a place called Isaiah Tubbs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, I was late that year because um, of that. So who's so whose dad and, was that? Was that mom's dad that, or dad? That's my mom's oh. mom's side, oh, and sorry. that was sad. That was an open casket though. Really? Um, it's weird though because when you see the person, it, it's, they're breathing. They they don't look they're any breathing. different. Look like I they're saw breathing. A dead body in a car crash. Well, that oh. was horrific. And then, yeah. And then actually, I went to more that year. So then, in just like we just after Christmas or around 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 um some time between uh, September and Christmas, mm. my granddad died, which is my dad on my. Dad's dad, right? And then maybe in June, mm. my great aunt died. So that was a great year for me. That, that was wow, really fun. Well, yeah, and your it's parents. Bit, um, yeah, it, it sort of sucked, but um, but it's the one thing we know is going to happen, right? Yeah, it's, like it's the one weird. thing you could basically plan for for sure. You don't know when it's going to happen, but you know it's going to happen. What about the wake, do you not have a viewing of the body of at uh, those in Canada? Well, actually, okay. Here's the thing. The wake um, is now that I think about it. Wasn't you're right. It wasn't actually the actual funeral that I saw the body. It so was, was it an Irish wake or wake. who do wakes? We don't do wakes. We're we're uh, Anglicans. Don't seem to do to do. Not that we're Anglican, but most of my family is oh. like Church of England stuff, and I think they mostly Church of England. I thought was was the closed cos- coffin and stuff. The yeah, mad no, the but... mad Murph plans on living forever, so it's not a problem for them. So far, so good. Yeah, so far, yeah, so good. I'm going to agree a, with that one. Um, um, that's interesting, though. So you, do, yeah, they do put makeup on the bodies, actually. That's a thing. They yeah, see, so mine didn't have I any was, makeup on. I was wearing was, more makeup than mine than the bodies I was looking at. Well, yeah, it was. Um, it was at actually at a, what's it called? It, like a viewing the body. It's it's before. It's not part of the funeral. Yeah, the wake. The wake. It's like no. It's called a viewing, isn't it? Is it called a viewing? Yeah, and I think it's just for it's more it's not it's just to see the person and mm-hmm. also it's also more of um give consolence to the family cuz that happens at the funeral too but like it was actually a 4 hour thing. So we went and we were there for 2 hours with mm. uh, my mom's thing and then we left have an early dinner. Yeah. At a nearby place. Yeah. Then we went back for another two hours. So that was four wow. hours. I can now tell you that was probably worse. The longest day of your life. Well, it, it's not. It wasn't. It wasn't just this being sad. It was also just very dull because half the people were just like, "I'm so sorry for your loss," and I'm like, "Thank you. I really appreciate it, but I have no clue who you are." Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? It's funny how we. Uh, you know, it's, it reminds me of that old joke of like, well, wait a sec. Why do we all stop and let the funeral procession go by? They're not in a hurry anymore. You know what I mean? Like they're dead. Um, but but the there is a there is a weird thing about how we don't start. We like like most of the people who show up at a funeral, if you haven't seen them for years, why, why do they feel the need to show up? I mean, I like it, I suppose, because you get to see. I suppose you're there to support the people who are still around. Right. It's really that. It's I guess not- that's it. I guess that is it. I should have answered my own question. Um, uh, the um, Japanese tradition for funerals, it's amazing. They massage the muscles and dress the person so they almost look alive. Wow. I'm not sure I'd want that job, though. Would you want the job of like, massaging, <laughs> massaging dead muscles? You, 
Like you go to masseuse, you go to a, a, a masseuse school. Is it masseuse? Masseuse. That's the name. Wow, like, Jack. Did you hear that? Jack and Kaz's dad. Uh, Jack and Kaz's grandmother died at a hundred and ten years old. Wow. And they don't even th- they're not even sure that she was 110 because because apparently in Mexico the birth certificates back then were quite iffy. Wow. wow. 110. I'm I'm happy to keep alive as long as I'm not uncomfortable. <laughs> I just don't want to be uncomfortable in 110 years old, I think. How did we get on this topic? Was this my fault? Uh, yeah, cuz you said uh, so. that you, um uh, it's weird how this happens. Well, okay. The, uh, let me, okay, then let me turn this into a science thing. So we're I'll talking go about dinner time at my parents. Okay, bye. All right, goodbye. Have fun at dinner. Eat well. Also, eat, eat well for us, Miss Lids. What if you funny, could cure? It's, a, it's it's um it's like one o'clock in Canada. So um. That's true. It does seem <laughs> weird to be having dinner now. It's sort of funny I'm, that someone's eating dinner. I'm always happy to have dinner. So you know, I I could always eat. Um. So it's question for you. For me. Question for you. What if? What if? The whole idea of death was just that we haven't figured out how to cure it yet. Yeah. What about that? David had a squirrel yeah. moment. David, I lived David. the squirrel moment. Yes, obviously. It's very true. Most of our Zoom chats, it's like um, we, we talk it's, we talk about um, something. So uh, we talk about something and then it's like, we're, 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 it's like we're going to talk about this robot that lays bricks and it's like, Wait, oh. what if they're evil dolphins? Yeah, exactly. That's basically where we went with that. Like, we haven't touched on any of the subjects that were in my email, which is totally fine. I totally no, fine. No, we have. Five times, well, we, we have. We, we have touched, yeah, all we right. We're going to how to burn them, which isn't the best thing. What do you think of those would robots, great, though? Be, that would be, that would have been a great um, uh, without context yeah. um, thing for someone joining. Well, they did. People were like, screen. I think we got raided, like, in the middle of that. They must have been like, what the heck is going on here? What is this? Why are we talking about burning? Exactly, dream? you know. Um, so there was uh, what else? Just quickly to see what else there was there. Because you saying it's one o'clock already? Yeah. Holy moly! It goes fast when yeah, we're like, streaming. I'm fine to stay here as long mm. as we're here. Need. I, I will be the last one here. I will have to go and eat at some point, but you know. Um, so, okay. <laughs> well, what else do we have here? So we have so okay. So what do you think about ah? This is interesting. So what do you guys think about? I'm not going to say guys. That's I love, just done it again. Uh, yeah. What's up, bud? Nothing. What's up, Bess? Nothing. Nothing. What's up? Yeah, you just start the rumor when the raid happens. Someone's someone's been here this entire time. Good point. We should have we should have told everyone that um. Did you know that uh? Matt flies. Five G internet and it gets you dates. Dates are gets you dates. I, uh, dates are good in date squares. I've had a, I think I've had one or two date squares, and they're pretty good. I like date squares, um, although I find oh, right. dates a bit, I find dates a bit squashy for me. I'm not a big fan of squashy, fruity things. I don't like. I don't Mango? really like. Like, don't cook grapes in my mind. I, I just, I. No. Uh, uh, should have started the rumor when the raid happened. That's so true. They wouldn't have known what hit them. Um, okay, so there's a couple more things in here. Let me just see what else there's anything worth addressing here. What do you think about the idea of, of, of technology that uses terms like master and slave and blacklist and whitelist and things like that being changed? Yeah. Makes sense? Yeah, I, I saw that part too. Because I, think, I, think we should change, I don't think we should go like rewriting a bunch of certain programs or anything, but, but you I think, think we should start changing it. I mean, master and slave, to be honest, is not a great term anyways because it doesn't really tell you what it yeah. means. And I mean, slave... What does it mean, though? Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. So it basically means that you know one of them is one of them is the is controlling the the whatever operations happening, and the slave is basically just responding to whatever that. It's usually it involves like the you know, and this I guess makes it even more racially charged. I suppose the master is in charge, the slave just does what it's told, and that's hey, basically. Can I say? Ha- mm. I would like to say something. Yes. Ooh. The right mind got that. How did they even get that term able to be put on? Well, because I think, again, as we've as we've discovered throughout all of this, yes. you know, the tech industry okay. is the tech industry okay. is very white. The tech industry um, is very white and white, and it doesn't it doesn't have you know it didn't think that through really right that slave would be a term that would that would obviously affect people. Uh, 
Um, but then, yeah, so that's it. So whitelist and blacklist. Again, again, Cal. What, what's wrong with whitelist and blacklist? Why must everything be associated with perceived skin color but not actual? I look, and I, and I think that there's definitely a, a case to be said for that. But I think, especially in the case of whitelist and blacklist, it makes way more sense to say like black male and white male. Is white male a thing? Uh, there's no such thing as white male, but there is black male. I guess the point being, I guess, is that traditionally know, black has been represented in white culture as a bad th- white culture, white society as a as a it's it's sort of seen as a negative or a or an evil you know force for evil type thing. So the idea is like, how can we sort of fix that? Um, I think what Cal, what you're saying there, which I think is interesting, is that is that yeah, I mean, obviously they weren't thinking white and black with whitelist and blacklist but since it does bother people or some people um then why not change it to something this is an opportunity actually to make things a lot clearer like i've always been confused by whitelist and blacklist the idea that you could have a list that says Mm -hmm. access list and denied list that just makes so much more sense anyways or something like that you know what i mean um yeah well Yes list, no list. Or yeah, green list and red. Even green list and red list makes more sense. Like, is green is go, red is stop. You know what I mean? Like, I- aliens and really angry people or constipated people. What? <laughs> how, did, how did we get out of constipation? What? Squirrel. Every, when you ever you really have to go to the bathroom, you always your face always goes really red because you're like. Aah! I don't know where the terms um, come from, where white list and black list come from, and I'm not sure. In fact, I'm. I'm what was that? Uh, no, no, no. Jack, were you going to say something? No. Oh, uh, no, I wasn't. I had nothing to say. No. Um, look, I think oh. it's, I think it's worth an inconvenience for us if it makes people feel better about their yeah. position, and it and it stops under it stops supporting any any possible underlying uh, racial, um, you know, any sort of like unconscious bias that comes into into technology. Um, but I also feel like maybe this is a great opportunity to actually clarify some of this stuff because I feel like a lot of the a lot of the early nerds, I think, almost tried to make things more difficult to understand so that they could keep their jobs. I feel like, you know what I mean? Like I feel like it's like going into a into a garage as a woman and they try to sort of like, oh well, it's a this, that, and this, that, and that, this. Like pretend like try to overwhelm people with technology terms or whatever to try to make it sound more confusing and more expensive. Um, you know, or when, you know, that, that, that somehow by making it more complicated, it, it implies much more sort of knowledge and, and, um, and, um, you know, an ability from the person who's actually doing it. I've always felt that the computer world has gone out of its way to make things difficult to understand. I agree. Um, I agree. I agree with, um, all the points are being brought up. I think, um, like, Mm. Oh, it was right. It like, creators probably weren't have the intention of white of, of actual races. Maybe they were. Maybe they were doing it in a sneaky way. But I think I doubt they were. Make, it also make it also makes sense for people to, to replace that because it's offensive. Yeah, it's I mean, offensive. It, it's it's. I mean, I mean, Cal also says something interesting here. So, you know, what if we get rid of referring to Caucasian as white and African heritage as black instead of the thousand other words? I mean, it's. I I, I think it's. That's it. That's. I mean, that's interesting. But I think there's also some people who take, you know, who I think take pride in the. Oh, I was going to say white pride is not a good thing, really, is it? But I mean, we're not seen as a, a good thing. But it's this, not seen as a good thing. But I think that, um, but like black pride, like, you know, that, that is something that people are definitely are, they are proud of. I mean that, you know, I don't want to, I, I feel like, I don't know, that's a think, really difficult one. And I feel like, I, I feel like as a white Anglo-Saxon old man, I, I just, I don't know how to, I don't know. I feel like my perception on this stuff is going to be so different than somebody of color and a person of color yeah, who's I, experienced it differently, you know? I always feel like I'm, I'm going to say the wrong thing. Because I haven't experienced these hardships, and I, no way, I, I am very blessed to have such a good, and a, a good life. Mm. And I just, I haven't experienced these things, and I just, mm. I don't like saying the wrong thing because I don't want to hurt anyone. Absolutely. So I think you just need all opinions. I, I think you've raised a really good point here, and it's something that well, I've struggled. 
quickly, someone said, let's see, we've covered 5G cell phone towers, burning, burning 5G cell phone towers, implications of conspiracy, news agencies, testing truths to fit narrative, growing meats in a lab for food sources, genetication, mani- genetic man- manipulation on dogs, the original ba- bananas used in banana flavored candy, which is now extinct, Avatar, The Last <laughs> Airbender, Woot Woot, Robots, Robots. USB- Microphones, raccoons. And now we're on to we're on, on to now racial equality. And um, yeah, I, I look, I think Crossgrim, you've you actually hit on it. This is what I freaking love about Tech Bandits. And I think that I, I feel like I'm I've gotta say I've really enjoyed this because I feel like this has been a really nice mix of both. You know? Um, oh, just brought a very good point. Being proud of your skin color just adds to the problem of creating conflict. Mm. I think that makes sense. I think we shouldn't have i feel like you can still describe people as having dark skin Mm. or having light skin or fair tone so like Mm. if you're looking for someone or describing someone you know what they look like Mm. i think having the idea of separating that person from everyone else because of it is the very problem is the very it's almost the definition of racism isn't it it's the idea that you're you are focusing on whatever the the obvious physical traits are of somebody and try to judge them as a person based on that. I, I mean, I have, I, you know, I struggle with the idea that, that I am white because I go like, well, wait a sec, but I'm white. I'm, you know, I'm white English, I guess, or white Canadian, or am I white American or am I as opposed to white Irish or white Scottish or like, I mean, I think there's, I think you're, I think Cal raises a really, really good point. I think, I think the idea of putting someone into a category based on where they're from is something that was used all the a lot, actually a lot of these terms are probably stuff used from a long time ago because for example if you if you're going somewhere you need to you have you um some people want to know where you're, like if you're training with someone people want to know where you're coming from mm. people want to know where what like country you're from or whatever. Well, you know what's funny though is like I went and had the genetic it's test colorful. done. I went and had the genetic test done, right? And not went and had. I went and sent off like the saliva and so I spat in a tube, sent it off, and they give you a whole breakdown of your genetic. Um, like so many people come from so many places. Like, but you know what's funny is eventually yeah. we all come from Africa, basically. Like we basically that's <laughs> where it that's, all traces that's back to. Yeah, I mean, well, genetically, that's where, I mean, that's, I mean, genetically, they've traced me back to, you know, Africa somewhere. So, uh, not me, but my, but isn't that funny? Like, I think, absolutely. I think there's a weird, I think we're in a weird position here where we both want to, where we need, and Cal's really hit on this, I think is a great point. The idea of like, we want to, we want people to be, to be proud of who they are and how they look and, 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 you know, and their culture and their upbringing and their history. But at the same time, we've got to stop identifying people specifically by those things. So we're in this weird kind of catch 22 where it's like, we want to get rid of whitelist and blacklist, but we also, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't it be great if we, if we weren't somehow, look, I think what would be, again, I think this comes down to education. I think the more people like me learn about, about the lives of people of color, the more I'm going to understand that that my perception on stuff is going to be different and in some cases very wrong and possibly very damaging yeah. and vice There's versa, some... I'm sure, you know? I don't know what it is like. like I've, I've read books. I've listened to stories about it, but I've it's hard. sometimes it's hard to put yourself in someone else's shoes when you mm-hmm. don't really know how much. Yeah. I, 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 no, I agree. And I, I've definitely been struggling with this myself. So, um, and, and it's become politicized as well, right? Like it's become a very sort of political kind of topic as well. So, um, uh, what if we create David Banner's chapters abroad all over the world to drive local initiatives regarding, Ooh, Oswald Santos wants tech bandits chapters all over the world. I love it. Tech bandits is an organization aimed to prepare people for the digital future. I like it. You know, I wonder, maybe we should say to some of our people... Sounds like a Tech Bandits cult. I know, it sounds like a Tech Bandits cult now. It's so true. Well, that's what The Endless was about. It was about a cult. It was about a cult that was stuck in a time... It was like a Tech Bandits squirrel. Um, Squirrel. So, was there a squirrel? No, no, no. Oh, damn it. Um, So, Harklight says, in a racist society, it's not enough to be non-racist. We must be anti-racist. That's interesting. So, I mean, I think that's what I'm... 
That's what I, I know. Cal's got it. It's the Tech Bandit. So maybe we should just stop calling ourselves the Tech Bandits. We'll call ourselves the Tech Bandit Cult. The Cult of the Tech Bandits. The, the okay, cult so of the... Are we going to run into the same problem that but we do had? Cult, call themselves cults? I don't know. Hey, That's a good question. Do they? Name no. The no, they, they don't. <laughs> Tech Bandits International. <laughs> TBI. Are we going to... I have a question though. Are we going to run into the same problem we had when we used to be called Tech Terrors? Well, that's interesting because tech. So, so yeah, that's an interesting point, Alma. So, we originally called. I originally called what well, what I was doing the tech terrors because, frankly, well, you've you've met Alma and Jack and everyone. You know what they're like. Um, so, terrors <laughs> seem to work. <laughs> terrors seem to. In fact, it's mainly Jack's fault because Jack was there the first year, so he inspired, partially inspired him and Baz inspired me to call them terrors. Yeah. Um, and everyone really liked the term Let's terrors, go, but there was some concern <laughs> from some parents that maybe. Terrors was the wrong, the wrong. Especially when we start making like bombs. <laughs> We're gonna Especially make bombs. <laughs> no, 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 I was just joking. Like, what? no, what? what, what bombs? What bombs? In our cover. Uh oh. Traumatic brain injury. Wait a sec. So paperclips points out that TBI means traumatic brain injury. So maybe not a good way. Maybe not a good not. way to. <laughs> but, yeah. Probably not the best way of, of selling us. As, <laughs> the future of society is the TBI. <laughs> Traumatic brain injuries for everybody. No. Yeah, you get one. You get one. <laughs> and a brain injury for you. And a brain injury for you. Um, well, that's amazing. Um, well, so... Uh, Race and racism is a reality that we so many of us grow up with. I think, I think that's a big thing. I think what we need to do is instead of acknowledging it exists, but also like like we we have we can't only we have to we have to deal with it. Hmm. It just. I think. Well, I think if I think we need to get a little uncomfortable and figure out. <laughs> that's that's what the steam sisters said. Is that what they said? Yeah, Remember those... they said. Oh my god, you're the best segue because I was just gonna. Zendaya, I was just gonna mention them. Hey, please, please make sure I'm saying their names right. Sunday and Swap. Sunday and Swapna. Yeah, I mean, I'm probably saying them wrong Zendaya too. But, yeah. Swapna. but they, if um, first of all, if no one knows who the steam sisters are, they're two. I'm gonna. I'm gonna sisters. put links in right now because I, I asked ever, them if there's anything for me to pitch, and I'm gonna pitch it for you right now because I absolutely. Yeah, so they 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 were really interested. A uh, big thing was they were really interested in concussions, and one of when one of their favorite hockey players got a concussion, um, they looked into it and saw if like what could they do to prevent concussions, like make a concussion-proof helmet, and they found it wasn't helmets that they needed. They needed guidelines because. A lot of the time, people didn't want to admit they had a concussion in major sports league, or didn't know they had a concussion, mm -hmm. or were just told to just stop complaining and get back on the ice. Yeah. Stop yeah. And get back on the ice. <laughs> what? Obviously, I, I don't know what that was either. I don't know what that was either. <laughs> uh, so, so I put a link to all the Steam Sisters stuff. The other thing that we'll talk about as well, just just touch on quickly. Um, is uh, obviously Tony Ellis, who is our toy maker inventor, who is, he's got, he's wired up a couple of little things for us for the... Uh, yeah, we talked about the no sensor yet. How yeah, we talk about the he's, no sensor? He's got a little one. He's got a little oh. version of one at this point. I know, but I mean, have we talked about, have you talked about on... on a, like, I've sort of, to I've mentioned it, but not really that much. Do you want to, you want to let them know what we, what we mean I by explain? it? explain? Should I explain? Please, Alma, go ahead. Thank you. Okay, so first of all, the no sensor is spelled N O H. So not so like it's like it's an acronym. So it stands for no outbreaks here. Mm. It's sort of funny. The reason we named it the no sensor is because it sounds more professional that way. <laughs> Which is so oh, funny because it's so it's so not o. professional, but yes. So unprofessional. Half the time we're gonna talk about it and then <laughs> And then it just like I just talk about evil dolphins. But basically, the no sensor is so David showed us this sensor where the idea is if someone comes, if something comes close to you, sensor goes off that's in within two meter range, and um and says, "Hey, someone's here." Um, for in Canada, it's still two meters. For six feet, two meters. 
Um, so we, we um, thought about it, and uh, of course, we came up with all the issues of David's very flawed plan. It was a very um, flawed plan. It's true. Very <laughs> flawed. Thanks, Alma. Thanks for making me look good. That's great. You're welcome. <laughs> Basically, we said things like, well, what if you're walking with your family? Do, do you need some way for them to connect? What if, like, people, where where do you wear these sensors? People might, don't, probably don't want to wear a big, a giant pad on their, on their, like, a jig, big, giant pad necklace. They don't want to look like total nerds, basically, is the idea, right? <laughs> Although, I, I don't mind. And, and um, so, all, all that. And we also did stuff like, um, how do you know it's a human? How... And basically, um, the end, uh, David was like, hey, here's another person I know from some random thing that does amazing stuff, Tony. And he brought Tony in, and mm. Tony, um, to try and see if we could create this thing, because having, having this, just, just to keep social distancing better, because it's hard to picture how far two, two meters is. is. Yeah, yeah. Or, or, or however um, big. Um, I know different countries have like different rest- Like I'm pretty sure some are one meters now. Some are one and a half. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of different messages on that right now as to what is required of the of us. Uh, I'm trying it's to see if I can to- if I can share you a uh, share a picture of the if I can share you a picture of the uh, of the thing that he's done so far. I think I can. Oh. Actually, wait a sec. Can I do that? Hang on, I think I can. Sorry, keep going. I'm, I'm, I'm distracting you. Um, yeah. Send. That's what the no sensor is. Sharing it. Um, Ooh, can I share? Oh, can I? Oh, it can't share right now. Damn it. Uh, okay. So that's the no sensor. Yeah, and the idea was that we're going to slowly iterate through it. So we'll create like a simple one that just keeps people apart to start, and then we'll figure out how we can not whitelist people, but how we can add them to what. What could we call it uh, instead? The green list. The green list. We put them in the green list so that people who... Well, wait, David. Yeah. Just how the, you said that, maybe that's a good thing to do. Um, Like on our, our, if we do make this thing, yeah, like safe list. That's a good one, especially mm-hmm. for COVID. Yeah. Um, Like a safe list. So yeah, actually, safe list is a great way of putting it. Exactly. Well, and again, it just means that engaged. then there's nothing to change later. Yeah. There's nothing that we have to change later. It's just a, it just, it's a, we're, we're, from the beginning, we're just aware that we want to make sure that we use like language that isn't going to offend anybody. We also, the other thing that we realized was, um, uh, the other thing we realized was that, um, that we could, um, you know, if we don't want to just test on, we don't want to just test the sensor on white people, <laughs> because if that's all, you know, if that's all we mm. know, we want to make sure that it works on people of color as well. Cause as we talked about this, we talked about this, uh, hand sanitizer that would only, hand, racist hands. It, it was I'm called a racist hand that. sanitizer. Yeah. Because it was, uh, because it would, it was for some reason it was only working on, on the white patrons, not the, uh, not the people <laughs> oh, of color. Uh, everyone on Twitch, don't forget to, rem- don't forget that, um, SGA watch party is Sunday at 2 PM. E East time. Is that uh, East time? Eastern. East time. We, we, that's right. Who's saying that? Who's reminding me of that? Oh, oh Xenos. Oh, yeah, that, that's right. 2 p.m. That's right. Uh, I can't share that image for some reason. I don't know why Google Google won't let me do it mm. on this on this PC for some reason. But I will. Uh, I'll have to I'll have to put that together. In fact, what I'll do is I'll put together some notes, maybe, and then we can and then people can see images in that as well. So. Um, e- S D or E D T. Um, I think we're on daylight time right now. o'clock Canada time. That isn't. Um, Toronto what, time. What, what, Toronto time, not um, because uh, isn't new um new um, what's it called? Um, we are Eastern Daylight Time right now, is what it's yeah. called. Because we're in daylight savings, I guess, or whatever it is. No, we're not daylight savings. We're in we're in daylight time, not daylight savings time. Right refer- now. If you want a reference for tomorrow, it is currently one twenty three. Wait, it's, what, it's almost one thirty. All right, I should wrap this up. Um, oh, so. No! I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, 
I've got a, I've got soliloquio stuff to work on. I've got things I gotta I got stuff I gotta work on. I'm afraid. Um, oh, I should probably put um, Tony's stuff up as well. Should I hang on a second? Let me see if I can. Um, Conceptioneering, I believe it's called. Uh, I'll put their link up as uh, his link up as well because he is a also a very good friend of ours, uh, helping out with the tech bandits. Oh, he's got a new website too that has a nice little animation on it as well. Uh, so let me pop that in there. I'm pasting. There you go. So this is Tony Ellis. Tony Ellis link toy oh, maker. Something. And um, yes. That I think he posted. Place, so I don't know uh, about it or not. But let me see. It, it's up to all of us, black, white, everyone, no matter how well, meaning we think we might be, to do the honest, uncomfortable work of rooting it out. It starts with self-examination and listening to those whose lives are different from our own. It ends with justice, compassion, and empathy that manifest in our lives and on our street. That's fantastic. That, that's-, that's very well put, Harklight. Very well put. Um, Harklight, so you know, Alma has been helping out with my um, monologues website. So he's doing. He's a oh. he's a computer guy. Um, uh, nice. Yeah, that's nice. No, it is just the offset of time from. Okay, sorry, sorry. No, it is just the offset of the time from east to west, and nothing to do with the savings time as that is just a shift of an hour either way. But EST is always three hours ahead of PST. Hey. Yeah, Boy, I York, just... I get so and then confused. He, isn't he an enemy of Batman's? <laughs> and he's enemy of... Up. I don't know who... And who an are. enemy of Batman, yes. <laughs> um, Xenos, I think we have automatic... We have automatic um, uh, update stuff, Xenos, now. I think uh, Cal has set it up so that... Uh, the, the links will scroll through as necessary. We've got the Zelenka bot doing that for us, I believe. Isn't that right, uh, Cal? Oh, you're talking about Toymaker. Toymaker is the enemy of Flash. Okay. Oh, the Toymaker. Oh, yeah. No, there's that too. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Nightbot, it's grumpy. It's not doing what it should. Cal, what did you say to Nightbot? What did Zelenka bot do now? Zelenka was my, my little minion in, um, in Stargate, who pe- some people quite like... They, some, some of them quite like Zelenka. I, of course, thought I was much smarter than Zelenka. So that's why we call our night bot, which is the, the, the little little uh, bot that helps us out on the uh, stream by putting up links and stuff. We, I call it Zelenka bot. Yeah, Breaker also just said a uh, museum concept to get um, local Aboriginal people from Australia to tell their own stories um, and just show local groups their people. And he says he doesn't want to be the one explaining it because... Lots the people that are actually experiencing these things. Well, that's it. So Spinner Breaker, the mm-hmm. interesting thing on that front was as well, I, is like with Soliloquio, I mean, I'm not seeing a lot of Indigenous or First Nations performers on our site. And so I've started sort of reaching out to see if there's a way of sort of changing that. Because especially in Canada, you know, there's a lot of Indigenous stories to tell that that, that people want to hear and, and that yeah. traditionally they've not been represented um you honestly know, i think in, in um, ancient like i think um indigenous like folk tales and stuff are incredibly interesting mm. way oh my god they have some really cool creepy tales too there's some really like you want some great horror stories you, you know there's some indigenous stories some first nation stories that are just horrifying amazing like stuff like they've got an amazing i mean of course every i mean and this and i guess the point being is that i'm not the one who should be telling them you know, people who've grown up with them are the ones who should be telling them. So, um, you know, although I do struggle with how do you, how do you celebrate someone else's culture without um, offending you know, it? Well, not offending it, but but um, you know, what's it called? If you if you are if you if you, ah, um, oh, I can't I can't remember what the term is now. But basically, when you when you take someone else's culture and use it in your own stories without. You know, appropriation, that's the word. Thank you, Mad, Mad Murph. Um, yeah, how do you appreciate someone mom, else's culture? Mom's already said that. And appropriation. Oh, mom's already. Mom is, yes, as always. <laughs> mom got there fast. Um, Zenos, what's... That is appropriation. Appropriation, that's it, yeah. So if we, if we, you know, how do you celebrate another culture? It, like, how do you write something about another culture and it is a show of appreciation or, or, or a celebration of without appropriating it. And one of the things that we're finding in the film industry is that the best way to do that is just to make sure that you're, that you're working with people from, from that, whatever culture it is that you're, 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 you're dealing with. So, um, you know, that you're not making it your own. You're, you're, you're 
being more inclusive and in how you bring people into it. So. Yeah. For example, um, I don't know how many films they do this with, but I know for a fact that Moana, yeah, the people from Disney yeah. actually went to see real Polynesian culture and talked to the people yeah. in order important. to make the film. It's really important. It's really important. You know, and don't cast... And don't cast white people to play them, or to play their voices. You know, I mean, I think that's, yeah. I think that just makes, it just makes sense to a large extent. But, um, oh, thank you for the subscription, Val. Um, look, I should really wrap this up, I'm afraid. I, I, could, I could literally do this forever. I think what's nice about this, though, is that if people are available, there's nothing to stop us doing more than one of these a week now, right? Because as long as I can, I can stream from here... Um, I think this could really open it up for people. And I think if there's if, if there are people in the audience who have kids who you think might be interested in being a part of this, they should get in touch. Uh, I'll give you my email address. Um, and just let me know who they are and what they're interested in, and, and I'll, I'll find a stream that makes, that makes sense for them. Um, oh, um, Spino Breaker, I'm guessing you're from Australia. There okay. you go. That's my email. Um, and, by, and bye to everyone that's been um, leaving right now. They, and also, th thank you for, thank you for, thanks, Peck. Uh, I feel kind of bad. Is that how you say it? The compliment. What was, bye. What was that? I did enjoy your chattiness. Oh, good. Um, uh, yes, Alma, thank you very much. Jack, thank you so much, sir, as always. Baz. Dude, you rock. Thank you for being our technician and our and our solver of all problems. Cal, the hammer, thank you so, so much. Um, I'm hoping we could, I'm thinking about maybe seeing about talking to the Steam Sisters maybe on Monday if people are up for that. I will come for that. I will come for all of this. I'm, or I'm not bored out of my mind, but I need something more productive than, um, than Netflix and YouTube to do. So You are less boring than my life. <laughs> all right everybody thank you so so much um yes we'll thank look i i i can't possibly thank everybody but i will thank everybody thank you music i'm thanking you now yeah i'm music well thank you too um because thank i know what will happen is how do we thank everybody but basically thank you everybody in the chat um, i should probably do a big i should i should do a big thanks to dstat for being a um uh, a sponsor level Sub, um, a patron. Um, it helps pay for. I would do. I would do Nuzlocke, locks, but I don't have Pokemon. <laughs> um, and of course, all patrons, all the subscribers, everybody, thank you so so much. This is absolutely amazing. I gotta say, I'd say, as our first Tech Bandits live, what do you think? I, I'm love it. Amazing. Amazing. Great. I'm really enjoying it. Like this I'm is. I'm actually in awe how well it worked. You're in awe of how well it worked. You're. I'm in awe of how yeah. well I made it work. Says Bass. These, these, people, these people are okay with us scrolling all the time. It's great. Well, I got news for you. I think most of the people who who watch us on Twitch are pretty good with the squirreling. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. Squirrel. Yeah. I'm very disappointed that we didn't see a single squirrel today. Maybe they're all sitting around listening at the window on the other side of the Stargate. Just, you know, trying to get as much education as they possibly can. Yeah. So, yeah, the hope being oh, is that we'll be... squirrels. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, again... Bye, bye, every, bye, everyone. Um, thanks for everyone's um, input to the conversation. There's tons of really, really good input. Lots of good input. Lots of good um, points. Well, it's nice to have a different perspective Thank than just you. mine. Right? And also... Anyone that's part of the raid, thank you for staying. <laughs> yeah, I, we must have scared off most of the raid by now, haven't we? Yeah, probably. I would think so. Because um, the other thing is we do PC bandits. Now... Alma, you're not really a PC. Well, though you're a Minecrafter, though, aren't you? I play Minecraft. Yeah, so maybe you might enjoy PC Bandits. I don't know. Well, again, one, I think I'm going to try to move all of this online, right? What do you think, Jack? Do you think we could do PC Bandits on this as well? Actually, you know, PC Bandits would be great yeah. on here because there's a lot of people who know a lot about PCs. Oh, yeah. That's perfect. Actually, there's Ooh. a lot of people that know a lot about everything. That's true. That's the beautiful thing. About, but that's the beautiful <laughs> thing about the internet, right? Like, that's what I love we, about it. We bring up bananas and they're just like, oh, by the way, there's... Yeah, we happen to have someone. There's always a nerd who knows a nerd. I love that. That's the whole point. Like, you know, so. All right, get out of here. Dad, the squirrels are watching the stream. The squirrels are watching. That's right. The squirrels are all at home in their trees are watching the stream. Are you one of them? That's it. Are you, are, you, are you the squirrel that has infiltrated? They're probably pirating my oh, cable connection. Game? 
Yeah, they're... <laughs> they probably like they're they're probably tapping off my cable feed, and that's probably why our internet keeps going up and down. Um, <laughs> all right, everybody, thank you very very much. I'm gonna shut this baby down, and I'm gonna say have a oh my god, have a great weekend. We'll see you. I guess we'll see you on Sunday for a um, a Stargate stream. But uh, but yes, uh, until we geek again, as my son and I would say. Cheerio. Until course, we geek again. Until we geek Bye. again. Uh, I, of course, don't know how to turn it down, uh, turn it off, because uh, my son's not here. Dad, go to OBS. I got it. I see, I see it. No, I'm sort of teasing. I'm sort of teasing. All right, everyone. Have a good one. Cheers. Thank you.